everyone. Welcome. This is the All Around Podcast, Episode 4. Today is Monday, February 20th. My name is Nick. Joined with me is the always lovely, beautiful man, Jeremy. How you going? How hey. you going? So, what's going on, Jeremy? How you feeling? Feeling pretty good. Good. Pretty good, good stuff. What, uh, what is our first topic of conversation today? Let's go uh, right into it's it. going to be Pokemon. Pokemon? Mm. Pokemon. Mm. Starting off with Nintendo again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a, it's it's a, it's like tax season. It's like Nintendo oh, season. It's we just can't, like we cannot avoid talking about Nintendo first. No, yeah. they just they have the one of the biggest parts of all this. Yeah, it's just it's true. a huge part of everything. At least for now, ironically enough, I feel like if we would have started this a couple months back. Oh yeah, wouldn't Nintendo, Nintendo wouldn't have been all. anything. Yeah, no. It would have been like, what the fuck's the you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. No, it would have been like, so uh, did you get your hands on a Nintendo Classic yet? Yeah. <laughs> Sniped. Already got it. <laughs> um, all right, so Pokemon. So yeah. Gen 2, it's yes. out now. We were talking about a lot of happenstance stuff. So the berries are legit. Yes. Um, one thing that we were a little bit nervous of was uh, the whole fact that they added them as the whole inventory wheel, but I yeah. like it a lot. Yeah, I it, like it, it makes it easy. I do love that it's just in the catching menu, yeah. and it doesn't look too clustered. Right, and I thought it was going to be like an actual wheel that was on screen, not something you would touch and then would bring up like yes. another thing. That, like well, I was. Well, they the way they described it, they even said it was a wheel, yeah. so it was. I mean, we literally took that literally. So right, yeah, literally a little too literally. literally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a little too literal. Yeah, but no, but uh, but it's good. I like the uh, I like the update for it. Yeah, the re- the Pokemon. I mean. It definitely seems like uh, what is it, Lady Bond, Hoot Hoot, or the yes, next Weedle Pidgey? Yes, yeah, Centred, absolutely. Centred's oh kind of like a Spearow. Yes, well, yeah. it, it is the Pidgey Weedle Rattata yeah. clones. You know what I mean? So we're just getting a ton of those. Spinarak's kind of there too. Yes, yeah. very true, very true. But that's yet, yet again because so many people call it Weedles because I think they're basing it off of um, the typing too. Like obviously yes. these yeah, are yeah. the more common early Pokemon numbered of this generation. Right. So that's the kind well, of trash I mean, mobs. The, that the other grow. thing too, I know a couple people uh, that are in Philly on different college campuses and they're surrounded by Totodiles. And, really? And like Execute. That's stuff. amazing. So it's just like, and I, you know, Execute's last gen. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. still, it's still interesting. It, yeah. It's, it's like maybe because of where we are, which for those who don't know where we are, we're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yep. Lancaster, Lidditz area. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't go too specific. Yeah. Don't give them the zip code. Jeremy, they're going to find us. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, there's uh, that. 90210. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you yeah. go. <laughs> we're in Malibu. It's like, no. <laughs> um, no, but I, uh, yeah, that's definitely interesting. Um, I've caught in a couple. What, what was it here? Let me ask you this then. What was your like rarest catch? What was your most interesting well, Gen well, 2? Let, let, me, let me say this. My first catch was an Ariados. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah completely cool. in in the middle yeah. of a giant. It was just like oh fuck. Yeah, it was great. It was just like oh, oh. I was like oh, that, that's that's a second evolution. I, like, I, I gotta catch that. Um, but other than that, I mean, it hasn't really been anything cool. I caught a Zatu without evolving a Natu. Okay. So that was pretty cool. I think I no see. I personally know you have one. You got one while we were playing Xbox. Yes. At your home. You gotta, yep. You gotta tell the people. Oh, the, the Wobbuffet. There it is. Wobbuffet. The right. Wobbuffet. Yes. He almost got... forgot, people. He almost <laughs> forgot the amazing catch he yes. got. But, but better yet, I got the female Wobbuffet who has the lipstick on. Yes. And with, also with no the splash. Upper. Yes. <laughs> it's great. Top tier. It is fantastic. It, it's, uh, it's Splash and Mirror Coat, right? Yes. Those are yes, two? Splash yeah. Mirror Coat. Top, yep. tier, top tier Wobbuffet right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Splash, yeah. Yeah. Splash 100%. Coat for those intros. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, so I was about to say that is good. I was I have not even seen a silhouette of Wobbuffet at all, and you caught it at night, right? Yeah. Maybe I mean we don't know yet. That might be like a rare night exclusive. Well, they were talking today too how uh, they're they're trying to implement new things where they already like apparently Gen Two is already dittified, where you can oh. find like hoot hoots that turn into ditto. Really? So the fact that they got on that immediately, I can see them adding like new types of dynamics where certain Pokemon are more popular at night. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely believable. Well, uh, that was the one thing I was surprised at, because, like, don't get me wrong, I see more Hoot Hoots at night, but I've also yeah. caught them during the day. And oh, I yeah. thought, at least out of the gate, I thought it was going to be a switch-off with, like, Lady Bob was just during the day, and then Hoot Hoot was just at night. Right. But, yeah, I don't know. It looks like that they're definitely switching it around, which is cool. I mean, yeah. like I said, the, uh, the only thing that I've had a personal, like, grudge with... Um, is the new items that they added yeah, the sunstone yeah. metal coat all that stuff you get them off pokestops if you don't know and it is from what i've seen extremely rare and I'm, completely random completely random um i'm pretty lucky so throughout most of my day i'm at least near one pokestop while i'm out and about 
Um, but to put in perspective, the, the update has been out for a week. Yeah. It's been a week since we did the podcast. So it's been out for a week. I've literally been swiping Pokestops, and out of a Sunstone, let me let's recap here. So there's Sunstone, yep. there's Metal Coat, yep. there is King's Dra- Rock. Oh, King's Rock. Yep. There's Dragon Scales, yep. and there's Upgrade for Porygon. Oh yes. Everybody forgot about that one. Yeah. I had to look that up because I completely forgot. Yeah. Um. So there's also Upgrade. So out of all of those, I have one Dragon Scale, yeah. and I've probably hit up Pokestops easily over 200 times oh absolutely you know what i mean yeah. so well i'm by two the majority of the day yeah so uh it, i mean i hit both of them every yeah. five minutes five minutes so yeah. uh, you know it's it's where i'm near my work yeah, yeah, yeah. so eight hours a day yeah. every five minutes i'm at least it's constant 300 yeah it's constant how many did you get any items no i've got you haven't gotten a single one yeah. that's what i'm saying and I've now, told- also keep in mind for people that haven't played it yet in in addition to having to have these items, you do also have to have the amount of candy. Yes, the same. And amount they of were not lowered. It is the same amount from before. So let me say this though: that is partially true. Horsey, they downgraded. Yes. So yeah, Horsey yeah, yeah. went from fifty to twenty-five. Right. But you are correct though. Like almost ninety percent of the ones that did require it are still pretty much right. kept the same. Well, Horsey was a different is a different kind of story because horsey now instead of going from state just stage one to stage two it's a stage it's now three stage now. one to stage two to stage three, three yeah. so they had to give cedra uh, Less. enough yeah yeah they, enough to, to go to kingdra plus the scale yeah so yeah, yeah. horsey was gonna get down yeah so that makes but, sense um but yeah no that's the only qualm i have because yeah. my perfect thing that you've heard me rant about but i'll rant again officially on a podcast i just hatched another 10 kilometer onyx yeah. So I had two. They gave me 25 each. And spoiler, to get a Steelix, it's 50 candies. Yeah. I have exactly what I need. Steelix is apparently, from what I've been looking at, Blissey was, is the top tier. That one is taking over gyms like crazy. Everybody's been yeah, talking about it. Yeah, everybody's got Blissey. Yeah. Um, Steelix, though, is apparently tier two, um, along with Porygon 2 and another Pokemon. Um, I believe it's Scizor. I believe Scizor is the other one. Okay, that um, makes sense. They're, they're supposed to be like tier two. And I just cannot for the life of me get a metal coat. And that's all I need to get stealing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's the only thing that's really bothering me. And like, you know, don't get me wrong. I get that the items are supposed to be rare because think about it. You're not really evolving that many Pokemon that often. Right. W- with with, with items those items. Particular. Right. Um, but it does just bother me of the fact that like I can't even get one. Like, I mean, right. I have one item. You've been doing essentially double my swipes yeah, and you don't even have, have one any. yet. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, that's crazy to me. Now, I know uh, somebody uh, who does have a King's Rock mm-hmm. and he was just like, well, like, do I do Slow King or do I do Polito? Yeah. Because I don't know when I'm ever going to get this exactly, again. Exactly. Yeah. So, that's the other thing, too. And same thing with me. It's like, don't get me wrong. I have the obvious pick of Steelix right now. But if I save up a little more Scyther, I could get a Scizor. Right. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, now, the other thing that for? I just thought of while we're talking about this. So I wonder if the game. Because, okay, so, you know, when you level up, mm-hmm. you can get more items. Level 20, you're able to get Ultra Balls. So yes. then Ultra Balls start coming out of Pokestops. Bingo. I wonder if they add in the factor of maybe I won't get Upgrade without having a Porygon. So I don't have a Porygon. So maybe I'll never get Upgrade without having him. Maybe they won't give me the item without having the Pokemon first. I don't believe so. Because I've heard, at least from posts that I've read, um, I have heard people get Metal Coat. And, and not have a Steelix literally, or, or well, an Onyx yeah, or... literally don't have an Onyx or a Scyther at all. Okay. All right. Um. So that's at least what I've heard. Yeah. I don't. You know what I mean? I haven't seen official confirmation of that by any standard. Um. Because I literally think. I mean, this is just me, kind of like off the wall here. Um. This isn't anything official, but just from me playing it for a while. In my opinion, I think it's like a two percent chance to get any of them, and it's yeah. a flat two percent every time you swipe. I think it's a two percent. That, yeah. That's just my opinion. I don't know if it's any and that, greater. And that doesn't include, like, you know, if you swipe a hundred of them, two of them are going to have... Yes. Like, that's not what you mean. Yeah. So, just for yeah. people that are listening. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, um, so I don't know. But yet again, there's some people I talk to that have, like, four or five items. Yeah. It, it's it, it's only, like, one person I've talked to. Everybody else, yeah, they're just striving to get one. Yeah. And yeah, usually it they're kind of in the same problem I am, where it's like you just want to evolve the one Pokemon and you just can't get the item. Yeah, you know and I mean? I mean the other thing too, your best chances are if you live like 
near a town square that's yeah. got like six different things within just a keep standing. Going. Just stay there for two hours, catch the Pokemon, drop a couple lures, and yeah. hopefully you'll get your item. Because that is, I mean, that is the uh, that is the whole thing. And also, I didn't know either. Um, something I found very interesting, because um, during the Valentine's update was when they had the Poke the, the six modules. Hour lures. Yeah. Yes. Um, those are still going. Apparently, and, yeah. At least for right now. I mean, like I said, today's the 20th, so we're still having those. I actually just did one this morning, and it's still happening. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're still absolutely going longer than 30 minutes. Like yeah. I said, yeah, it's yeah, roughly 100%. about six hours. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know when they're shutting that off because they, yeah, they made that seem originally like it was uh, part for of – For Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, right? and even before – I think they were doing it like a week before that. Right. And well, then, I mean the other thing too, it, it could just be – that uh, it's just for like the first week of Johto. Yes, they could exactly. Just be doing it. Yes, which a lot of people have been, you know, wondering too. Are they gonna like slow down on the Johto Pokemon? I was just gonna bring that up actually. Yeah. The only Pokemon I've seen from Gen One are Pidgey, Rattata, and Weedle. I've seen I've seen a couple randoms. Like even just ironically enough, we were just walking around before we started this and got a oh, Grimer. Oh yeah, Grimer. Yeah. yeah, which was like completely rando. Oh yeah. Ironically, in the cleanest place ever. It's not <laughs> like we were in some fucking trash can and got a <laughs> goddamn Grimer. Um, we might as well have been in like Center Square and got. <laughs> uh, oh, that place can't be pretty dirty. <laughs> but um. But oh, no, it's I, very grimy I've though. Seen, uh, but, uh, I made a pun. I'm gonna go just die. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> uh, I've seen, ironically enough, I've seen a couple executes and oddishes. Execute I don't get, but oddish I get because of blossom. Yes. So I get that. Oh, I completely forgot about blossom. Yeah, blossom's where it's at, bro. Like I'm yeah. at like rando. I'm at eighty. I'm at eighty candy on a gloom. Wow. My gloom's at like eight hundred. It's like in it. Yeah. I just need to get that hula skirt sunstone and then I'm done. <laughs> That's going to be, oh gosh, it's going to be awesome. Um, no, but yeah, I mean, it, it was like we were talking about before, um, you know, taking back a little bit like, of what I said, I am definitely glad that they did do this update. They have added enough where I feel like it is perfectly acceptable to go back to the game. Oh yeah, yeah, um, 100%. You know what I mean? They, they added in quite a bit. So right now, I really don't, Personally, I don't have a complaint, and this update, at least for now, has qualmed most. Like I said, I mean, the only problem I have is just the really rare items I just wish yeah. were a little, like, a little more common. Yeah, you know a, what I mean? a little bit. Yeah, and I understand it, though. On the flip side, trying to look on their scope, um, I understand from their perspective, too, because at the same time, the more important thing is Pokeballs. That That is the main thing you always want from a stop yeah. because you don't want to spend money. Well, I mean, and think about the other thing, too. In the games, sometimes these items are impossible to find. Exactly. Like, or, or there's only one ever yeah. in one game. And you, so. Yeah, and you have to figure out who it is that you have to talk to to get to a yes. game and go from there. Yes. The other thing, the other gripe that I have with this mm -hmm. is that we weren't given starters like we were the yeah. first time. And what's funny because is... Because I have not seen a Totodile, Chikorita, or Cyndaquil... At all. See, a couple of buddies of mine have, have have like seen them. Chikorita is the one I've seen the most. I've seen oh, a couple totodiles. I know somebody that caught a bay leaf. See, yeah, I it was yeah. So um, like, I haven't seen anybody with a Cyndaquil. That's the one though that my I little brother seen. caught a Quilava. Really? Yeah, in our living room. That's amazing. <laughs> also, you should disown him now because he didn't. He should have warned you. If you were at work, he should have been like, "I gotta go. Just drive. <laughs> Just commute, bro. Just, just, I gotta, gotta go." Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, well, that at least... Well, good. I'm glad yeah. to hear somebody called one then, because yes. I haven't heard from anybody about a Cyndaquil. Um, no, but even, yeah, they give you that update of, like, 80 new Pokemon added, yeah. and then they just kind of dip off with the it. The other so. Pokemon that I haven't seen uh, anybody have is a Pineco. Yeah, I haven't seen I either. I want one. Well, yet again, <laughs> that's another... Uh, now that we're talking about that, I didn't even think about that. That's one that absolutely is a metal coat. Yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely another one. another one with the metal coat for Gen 2 only. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there's. I mean, listen. There's quite. There's quite a bit of Gen two that I haven't seen. Like, I'd love to see a Mareep. Yes. Anybody with a Mareep, like or an a Mill Tank. Yeah. Oh, uh, which, yo, Mill Tank. Oh, hang on, hang on. I gotta look this up. Uh, oh, it's Heracross. Heracross yes. is only available in South America. They okay, so they, they already they, are doing. But it's only one region, and what's what's funny is in the first region he wasn't. There wasn't a South America region locked. Yes. It was. Uh, Australia, yep. Asia, Europe, and, and North America. Bingo. So instead of giving 
North America, Europe, all another all one. They just gave one to South America. Got it, which is Heracross. So it's Heracross. So Heracross, you will have to... Hatch an egg. Hatch an egg or trade if they ever put that on this game. Yes, that's, yeah, that's the only other thing. Um, I would really love if... Or let me even say this. I, I would just really, love item trading. That's exactly what I was going to say. At yeah. least item trading. If yeah. you don't want to trade Pokemon and you don't want to make it that... like. Because let's be real, the game would be very broken very quickly if you could just be like, oh, yeah, there's like 10 Pokemon I don't have that you have. Let's just swap them real quick. Right. Bam. You know what I mean? Because like, that gets rid of XP. the fun. Exactly. It really does get rid of that fun well, of just no, like, no, oh, let's, let's talk about that real, thing in years. real quick. So let's say that, you know, let's say you had a Mareep. Got it. And we trade for it. Bingo. And I have, I don't know, an Arbok and you don't. Cool. We trade. Yep. It would be very interesting if they don't give you the XP for finding that Pokemon. You just now have that Pokemon. It's in your Pokedex, yeah. and you can never get the extra six hundred or XP or whatever it is. Yeah, for that, that would be interesting. Like, that would that would that would make it so the game is still challenging and well, fun, well, but also it still puts you in the point of uh, you really should earn the experience for it. Yeah, but say I mean like, but it would also I feel like justify with so many people if they're like you know, um, like even a uh, one friend of mine. She almost has the entire OG original Pokedex filled. At least, you know, obviously yeah. not counting, like, the legendaries and shit, oh, which right, are right. still non-existent. Yeah. But but any Gen 1 Pokemon that is absolutely in the game, she's, like, two away from. And I have the two she needs. Oh, wow. So it's at that point where she doesn't really care about the experience. She would just love to have them so that they're registered in her Pokedex. Right. You know what I mean? So I feel like that would qualm that ailment, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? To just have that It'd be cool, up. too, if we could just, like, give each other candies. Yes. Well, like, like I said, items would be so much better because, yeah. like, perfect example, another buddy of mine has two metal coats. He's not using both. Right. I would love one. Yeah. I'll give him, like, five Ultra Balls for it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just, like, that's just where it's at. So, um, yeah. So, like I said, I'm I'm really glad that it's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And going off on a small tangent real quick, too, to jump off Pokemon. Yeah. Um, because I've always been bringing up Fire Emblem every time we talk about Pokemon. Yeah. Um, Fire Emblem still has their main summoning thing and still their XP times 1.5, at least for now. Um, both of uh, the times 1.5 XP ends on the 25th and the new, and the latest summoning event ends on the 27th. So oh, okay. coming up probably uh, – actually, what am I saying? So literally next week when we do the podcast, there should be more updates for it. So that will be cool to talk about. Uh, but the one – uh, the one major like new feature that they added, at least for now, was um, they put out their third event. So okay. every major event that they add into the game, they add like two to three maps, and you can get like uh, three orbs. And usually, usually whenever you beat a story quest, you only get one. This way, you get three. So they give you a fuck ton more orbs just for yeah. participating. So so they added that, which was really cool. So I just want to bring that up as you know what I mean. Also, yeah, like the Fire Emblem, which. To be honest, I mean, the game that I've been comparing it to, um, just for app games and Nintendo products and update, relatively, Fire Emblem's been fucking killing it. They've been murdering it since day one for me. Um, I'm horrifically biased because I've been putting in way too much fucking of my goddamn money for this thing. But, you know, I digress. Anyway. I started it. I did, <laughs> did you? I did start it. Good. I did start it. Good. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, you're I'm not, not, not. You're not big on turn base. I'm not. Yeah, so exactly. So it's. Oh, well, let me say it, for me. It's let me cool. say strategy, yeah, turn strategy, based, yeah. not just because like Pokemon is turn based, and obviously Pokemon. Yes, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to confuse the audience yeah. with that. No, I love Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, 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 regular like Pokemon, uh, Digimon, give me yeah. all that. I'll yeah, play. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that Final Fantasy Tactics, Disgaea, yeah. Grid, Lock, turn based. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't. Yeah, I'm not. Thing. Not a. Not a I, I will say though, I do like though the fact that for a lot of people that haven't played it. Or, like, for a lot of people that aren't fans of it, it is a perfect introduction. Yes, it 100%. Is like, it is, like, literally, like, you know. Because it, it makes me want to go out and buy, like, Awakening or Fates. And yeah, give exactly. Give it a try. Yeah. I uh, don't cool. really know if I'm going to spend 40, 50 bucks on well, them, I was but I'll give say, it a yeah. try. Well, Fates is probably, I mean, just personally, now that we're just talking about Fates is the one I would more recommend. Okay. Um, Awakening, here's, here's the dilemma. If I had to rate them, I would probably actually give more rating to Awakening. But Awakening is way more expensive, and it's way tougher yeah. to find. Yeah. So I would just go with Fates. You play relatively the same type of game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and for me, I actually – the story in Awakening is better, but the okay. characters in Fate I like a lot more. Okay. In either version, sure. by the way. Not to yeah, say – Yeah, Conquest like, or yeah, Birthright. Yeah. I personally like Conquest a lot more, but Birthright has amazing characters. I played both. Um, I played both and the Revelations DLC. 
Um, so I love both. I well, I love, I love all the Fire Emblem games really. There's not really one I like absolutely hated, but um, but yeah, personal recommendation. I would say just go with Fates. Cool, it's pretty fucking rad. Well, maybe I'll try it, and then uh, next then week maybe it, yeah. I'll give, uh, maybe. give uh, maybe 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 we'll see. Yeah, that's we'll quick see. though. Don't put yourself on that quick of a budget. All right, two weeks. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Bring it up when you play it. That's the more that's the more yeah. important thing. Yeah. Um. All right. So switching gears, finally off Nintendo. Yeah. I think, yes. we're, I think yeah. we're done. Yeah. Nintendo's yeah. Nintendo's done this, until the Switch. Comes this out. might be Jeremy. This might be a new record. We only talked about Nintendo, if I'm not mistaken. How long? Like twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Fifteen seconds. Twenty minutes. We didn't yeah. even waste thirty minutes talking yeah. about Nintendo this time. You're welcome, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> You're We're no longer the Nintendo fan podcast. No, don't say that. Give it two more weeks. Can we say fans? I we've mostly been bashing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. From two guys who were buying the Switch, we could not sound more pissed off about buying <laughs> a new console. I, I gotta say though, I am excited. I, oh, getting yeah. getting closer. Yes. I'm excited. The, okay, so the other thing I'm going to talk about real quick because I don't want to hit that 30 minute mark. So bear with me. <laughs> you, um, you got I've nine seen, minutes and ten seconds. Ooh, so I've seen images. I've seen uh, I've seen images. And I've also held the uh, at least for what we th- what we appear to be for display cases yes. for the Switch. Yeah, um, I've seen them now. Best Buy, GameStop. Yeah, uh, they, they've been I think a couple. Walmart places. was building them. When yeah, I was there the yeah, other yeah, yeah. They have a couple places. Um, the best way to describe them for people who haven't seen them yet. Um, I mean, obviously, just walk into one of those stores and you'll see it. Yeah. Um, but at least for the best way to describe it, it's like a PSP case, but essentially cut in half. Um, not height wise, but, but width. Yeah, with thickness wise. Yeah, thickness, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a very, very thin case. Yes. It's a very sturdy case. Yeah. Because it, like, it, it was almost, I don't want to say difficult, but it was, you had to, like, put pressure to open this Well, thing. dude, DS, it's dude, DS cases were just yeah, like that. The Three, same thing. 3DS and the, these cases are clear, uh, yes. at least from what I'm figuring out. Yeah, from what uh, we're looking at. But it's, it's interesting that it's got the cartridge and then the instruction booklets above, above it. Above it. Not so they're on tight. the other side. Yeah. Now, I did see pictures of, like, an open case of Zelda, mm-hmm. like, when they did the New York, like, yeah, display thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks like behind it is going to have, like, Reverse cover art. Oh, like cover yeah. art on the oh, inside. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Be I, I could definitely, yeah. I could see certain games do that. Yeah. Like, It'd be um, cool because, like, you know, you got ESO, Elder Scrolls Online, yep. and that had the reversible thing, which you could kind of see on the other side, but it had the blue or the green, depending on which system yeah, you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with this one, you have the clear one. They can do all kinds of designs can, on the inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But even, um, like, a perfect example, because um, PlayStation did it for a while, but even, like, um, because the main reason I bring it up, Disgaea, this guy five because that is also now coming out on the switch yes yes it is. um but yeah they always have reverse cover art yeah, so it's always yeah. kind of a generic case and then always the flip side is always like uh it's like a white background and it's like chibi versions of like all the characters and a whole collage um so i guarantee they'll fucking do that again with, oh yeah uh, with the switch but you know what's funny now that i'm actually saying that i might be eating my own words because whenever they do a Game of the Year edition, like when they usually put them out on the Vita, yeah. they have the reverse cover art as that cover art. Yeah. Maybe maybe this time they'll do the reverse, now that I'm talking out loud. Maybe. They might do the collage as the main picture and then do the old school image as the reverse. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. I don't even know why we're going. <laughs> <laughs> like people have been waiting on the of like, what's the reverse going to be for Disgaea? I've been listening. I'm four episodes in. What is happening? What's going to be the reverse cover for this well, guy? They mentioned it yet. <laughs> like, so, so, anyway. And time. Time yes. on Nintendo. 2331. Yeah! Yeah. Right. For the record, right. we're not going to try to set any more records for that because we're probably <laughs> going to talk about it longer next time. Yeah. Because we're only impeding closer on the Yeah. We, well, next um, time is going to be th- by the time the episode releases, two days before the Switch comes yeah, out. Yeah, it'll be pretty so, fucking hyped. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty excited. Um, no, going off on other consoles and other dates. Um, uh, Crash. Crash. Crash got a street date. Crash got a street date of June thirtieth. June thirtieth. Forty dollars. Yes. As retail. Which is so fucking awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. And it's all it's all three. It's the first original yes. three. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they put out a, a picture of uh, what they all look like. All the characters, the main characters. Yes, I did see um, those. They look which, great. Yeah. Yeah. They absolutely. They look fantastic. I love how um I do like, I love that they touched everything up. Yeah. And it definitely looks like redone. Like well, the, they they completely redrew the characters. Yes, it, yeah. you can tell they look different, but it's more appropriate to the time frame now. 
Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Because Crash has been through a couple weird renditions. Like, you know, on PlayStation, it was very blocky, but that was just because of right. the time frame of when it was out during right, the original right, right. OG PlayStation. Well, I mean, he looks just like he did in Skylanders Imaginators. It's yes. Same, it's the same, yes. same design. But it doesn't so. look as, uh, like fucking lunatic as on 360 right. when they were doing right. the yes. ones and oh, stuff yeah. like that that's when he was going like for me just a little like yeah. too much like, now everybody do keep in mind this is not naughty dog yes uh, i've talked to, about this i've talked to quite a few people about uh the crash remake and mm -hmm. people are always like yeah i can't wait not can't wait to see what naughty dog does it's, it's not naughty it's dog not naughty it dog. is activision and another studio yes uh, i can't i don't know the name of the studio i'll look it up yeah well, i was about to say, um, try to check that out real quick but it is it is not uh naughty dog yeah i mean i just i think this is like such a cool setup i mean we see so many hd remakes and stuff like that come out but i just love that it's 40 bucks it's all three and i mean yeah. for at least for right now they're from what we've talked about it's full it's all full three games yeah like it's not like you know partial or they cut the game in half or something like that um it's uh vicarious vicarious yeah okay cool good um good for you yeah so they're they're the ones that are doing uh they're the developer activisions and publisher so it is not active it is they're, uh, they're not, not naughty dog it's not naughty yeah. dog so, so that'll be interesting yeah i mean it's at the same time it's it's naughty dog origins but yeah, yeah this is but, definitely however this also uh, so let's say that this is as big as everybody's going to make it out to be because hopefully. a lot of people are going to buy this. Hopefully. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to buy it. It's going to well, be the greatest well, thing also, that I play too, all year. Well, also, too, just throwing <laughs> on a small, like, note, I mean, this is the perfect game because it's very rare. I mean, next to what, Lego games and yeah. Skylanders, which isn't coming out this year. Right. It's very rare for kids yeah. to get, you know, that quintessential game. And, and it's one of those games similar to you know uh sonic and mario that is enough of an icon that people recognize it but one of the only games that hasn't like truly been made in a really long time oh yeah because the last one we had was what mind over mutant in yeah oh eight yeah that's almost, it's been a long so time. it's been a long time Very coming long time. and it's the original games that you know our generation played when we were kids. Oh, because, yeah. Because, you know, people that are always like, the people that wanted the NES Classic, yeah. they were, you know, playing games in the 80s. Yep. I was playing the Crash games when I was growing oh, up. Oh, yeah, it was like that, Spyro, yeah. all that yeah, stuff. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, Spyro, you know, took a real shitty turn with Skylanders. Yeah. But if we could get, like, a real Crash game after this... Oh, yeah. I would be all for well, it. Well, dude, I'm, I'm still banking on... I mean, like, it probably won't happen now because of, like you just said, with Skylanders... But I hope they kind of look at this and go like, "Hey, let's do Spyro. Let's do Spyro. Let's do the stuff that people actually enjoy and like yeah. redo." Because it's because that that's the main thing that bothered me. I mean, we got so many quote unquote HD remakes of games that were just on 360 and PS3. Give us older stuff that was on PlayStation that needs completely, you know. And I give know us that, another Jack and Daxter. Oh my gosh, yeah. But and like, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be ignorant. I know that takes time. Like, I know that right. that's a two to three year process. But at the same time. You're the fan base that will gladly wait. Yeah. You know oh, what I mean? Absolutely. absolutely. And, I mean, let's just say Insomniac decided that they were like, hey, you know what? If Activision can help do Crash, what if the original people that did the original Spyro game go to Activision yeah. and say, you know what? You already have the Spyro rights. Let's just do a remake. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'd play it. I would absolutely I mean, play Insomni it. I mean, Insomniac already hit gold with that Ratchet and Clank setup. Yeah. I mean, they put out the movie, they're doing the game, from at least what it looks like, they're definitely going to do a sequel. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think they're just going to keep the franchise going. I, yeah. I mean, they have, I mean, it sounds really funny, they have the perfect opportunity, at least for them, going off on a tangent here, um, to just keep doing remakes, but retouches of those old, like, yeah. do Go in Commando, but in whatever kind of way they want you know right. what i mean introduce that like other female character like midway through and then still yeah. have that end boss but you know what i mean just change up how to get there and more story in and between. then hopefully sucker punch will follow through and want to do a sly cooper one yeah and just yeah, reboot sly cooper absolutely because i don't need a sequel to thieves in time no yeah, i need I agree. another sly, sly cooper, cooper just like I, start it over yeah do sly cooper on the four yeah and let's just get like a brand new ratchet and clank engine style game yeah where we have beautiful graphics beautiful environments make it open world imagine an open world sly cooper that'd be amazing or, it, or even or, or, or a huge hub world yeah or, or i was just gonna say even do um 
you know, like technically it's open world, but you know what I mean where I'm going with this. Like almost more like an Assassin's Creed setup where you have a big map. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's open world, but I don't like the way you're stealthily running around. You don't really get to enjoy right. the whole open world. You right. enjoy the rooftops of all the whole open world. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I would love a game even kind of like that. You know, yeah. I mean, where it has a bunch of quest lines and stuff like that to go run around do you could just sneak into people's houses or, or even games like you know picture like sonic adventure but make the hub world 20 times the size of it yeah like the same kind of setup yeah, yeah just yeah. have sly be able to go all throughout like whatever hub world try to find different things and they kind of did that in sly 3 yes but, i was, I was make that, that up. make that 10 times bigger make yeah. it a city to go well, you through can now because of, of yeah. the console exactly yeah. i would love that yeah well that's what i'm saying too and coming from a guy who has been pissed off at a lot of remakes like not recently but i've just been getting tired of the here's the hd remastered of insert whatever but it's like this crash is a perfect genuine idea of just that um i talked about a couple episodes ago with nintendo but it's just that actual nostalgia yeah. not the fake nostalgia stuff like this is genuine a lot of people care about it's a franchise people love like yeah. just stuff like this and and that's the thing you don't have to make like a new game just redo the old games you know right. what i mean so it's like yeah. so the idea setup doesn't have to be there just have that team work on it for two years just to do the touch-ups and put it out just because people want it you know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, I mean, and that's the glory of the Crash game. It wasn't a remaster. Like they didn't. It wasn't like what they did with Jack and Daxter from PS2 to PS3. They yeah. didn't just HDify them H exactly and put them on a disc. Yeah. They started from the ground up mm -hmm. and just made another game in the vein of the Crash Bandicoot I adventure platformers and just do it. And yeah. like I am, all we've seen so far, at least from what I've seen, is is Crash One gameplay. So like, far, yes. I've, I mean, I te technically, there's been, like, in those montages, I'm assuming there's parts of 2 and 3. But yes. no, you're 100 Like, 80% of what I've seen I is all from see, 1. Her name was Coco, right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to see Coco riding on the little tiger on yes. the great wall level. Oh, my gosh. Right? I want to see that. Yes. Yeah, I want to see when Crash is in that weird fish looking submarine yes and doing those With i want to see that and stuff. Yeah, yeah i, I totally, want to see that yeah but like, I, I think they're hiding it for now yeah. especially oh, because absolutely. i mean what it's february so what we have four, four more months, months. Yeah, yeah exactly so i think they're definitely going to put out more stuff and well, i think it comes out right after e3 yes so yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. e3 it's i don't want to say it's going to be a big part of their e3 because it's coming out a week, week later later but yeah. they're definitely going to talk about it well i think well that's what i'm you know future future predictions for e3 i'm hope that they kind of ride that into like spyro or something like we were talking about like i hope they yeah. go hey by the way this is coming out but guess what's coming next like that's or, what i hope or they just be like so you know like last year we talked about the crash bandicoot trilogy and it's coming out but guess what we have a new crash game That'd be and they just start with a whole big like new would actual crash off or yeah. if anything just even do like the crash racing but do like yes but, oh my god oh my god yes. but here's the thing like just do um just do it as dlc <laughs> thank you or do like an arcade game yeah like, you know what I mean? Do it, like, 25 oh bucks. My God. So it's a yes. little bit higher priced. Yes. You know what I mean? Well, here's, by the way, too, going off on a small thing real quick. Um, Give me Crash Team Racing. One thing I would love if we're talking about, like, kind of, like, side racers. You know what I mean? I'm going back to the Switch for, like, 10 seconds. <laughs> um, I want, personally, I want Diddy Kong Racing on yes. Switch. I think that'd be cool. Now, I know they're obviously mostly doing GameCube. At least that's what yeah. we've heard, that that is their main push of retro games. But I just don't want to see Diddy Kong Racing. I think that'd be sick. Yep. I think it'd be fucking awesome. And then you do the multiplayer with the Switch controllers. Yes. That's a perfect game to just or, have or just give us another Diddy Kong Oh, game. my God. It'd be so great. Like, That'd be perfect. That H is the HD per remake it. That is the perfect thing. You know, but then I think they kind of hit that unintentional competition with Mario Kart. Well, the, the, yeah, but the other thing then, too, is Rare Diddy, yeah, Diddy, uh, Diddy Kong Racing. Damn it. And Rare You're is right. now Microsoft. Soft. So maybe we could get Diddy Kong Racing on the Xbox without Diddy Kong and Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> it it's just, just all the other characters. banjo kazooie and conquer and it's uh it's it's conquers conquers bad racing yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> conquers bad race day yeah there it is oh god but oh, uh boy. but yeah so yeah so but uh but going on playstation yes um, keep it on going back to that track at least um horizon zero dawn yes it's a game it's a thing it is the, a game the reviews came in 
At least most of them. Most of them. They're getting there. Yeah. So right what, now. What did we say? 88% on Metacritic? Yeah. 88 right now is the score on Metacritic. I mean, obviously that might fluctuate because a lot of the reviews are coming in. Right. Um, the more important one, though, that I wanted to point out was um, IGN gave it a 9.3 and personally said for editor's choice of amazing. Yeah. So they're talking it up, up and down. Um, I read, like, the whole article up and down from at least the whole review. Um, the only thing I want to personally say, and I'm not bashing IGN because they this entire review is very descriptive. Um, you know what I mean? And me and Jeremy have been looking a lot into it. Um, the only thing that uh, annoys me a little bit about it is um, they explain a lot. They go into a lot of detail about how you're fighting the monsters and stuff like that. Um, but I'm still just not getting... I feel like I'm just not getting the scope yeah. of this game. And, and don't get me wrong, these reviews are obviously telling me, hey, it's good. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, I don't know. I, I just – and the marketing for it isn't even bad either. Like, no, I, like that's the thing. I, it's, I, it's just one of those games I'm confused. Yes, like, exactly. It's, it's not I, – I, I don't want to complain because that, that's the thing because it looks amazing. I mean people are talking about it. It's great. Um, but yeah, I, I just kind of want a more – clear concise answer on that setup like you know what i mean like does it play more like shadow of colossus or is it more like assassin's creed yeah or like shadows of mordor yeah. or like something you know what i mean like going off on that tangent it's it's kind of the same thing um yeah i don't know or is it more like tomb raider yeah exactly because like, that mean, kind of honesty, open world yeah mission base but i mean you're still kind of going wherever you want i mean when they first announced this game mm -hmm. what two years ago now yeah uh, it yeah, was too. It it two very it very much reminded me at the time of Recore, but that's also when I thought Recore was going to be this gigantic game. Yeah, when which it, it when did it not want. Yeah, yeah, wound up not being at all. Oh. But at the time, I thought the gameplay at least looked kind of similar. Well, the, the premise that, looks similar. Yeah, the premise of one girl. Yeah, and a bunch of machines. Yeah, and trying to. And start I was just up. like, oh, okay, so like Microsoft's doing like an answer a, to a it, kidder, a kiddier, a kiddier version yes. almost of of Horizon yeah. Zero. But the, Dawn. but the main problem with that, at least going off on Recore for a sec, the main problem with Recore was it's um I can't remember the developer offhand. I apologize, but I know for a fact that it's the same one as uh, Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh, uh, wait, it's not Deep Silver. You sure? Yeah, no, it's not Deep Silver. It's um. Jeremy's got fact check me right now. It's Armature. Armature. Armature Studios. Huh. Which is um I swore. It's the people that helped do uh Oh no, it's because that was your fact check me. Okay, Metroid. Metroid Prime. It's the people like the oh. same developers that helped do oh, Metroid maybe. Prime. They like broke off that's, and then made this and yeah. That's what I might have mixed it up with. Or maybe it was the maybe not the production team, but maybe it was the publisher? Uh then there was Asobo who did uh, Toy Story 3 and Wally. -E. Um, oh, God, that should have been our first warning. Right there. <laughs> and Christ. then Concept, who did. Maybe it's Concept. Oh, which is. Uh, it's. Or Concept. Concept, me, not sorry. Concept. Yeah, 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 sorry. Concept, which thing. is by the former Capcom employee, Keiji Inafuna. Yes. Inafuna. Inafuna. I can't, I can't say his name. Kenji Inafuna? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I can't Inifuna. say his name. There you go. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's how it yeah, got linked. Yeah. Was Mega like, Man. I, there yes, you go. Mega Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Well, because that's the original, and then that's where they broke off to do Mighty Number no. 9. I'm pretty yes. sure. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, okay. But, but Mighty Number no. 9 was also Deep Silver. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to get that confused, sorry. Yeah, because Mighty Number no. 9. We just made that very confusing. I Mighty Number no. 9 was Deep Silver, Concept, and Inti Creates? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. What is Inti Creates? Oh, they did Mega Man Zero. Bingo. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, one game I like very much, but yeah, yeah, my number nine pissed me off to no extent. But yeah, but anyway, <laughs> but yeah, they, they they were kind of banking off that, and then they put out both those games right around the same time. Yeah, you know, because my number nine got delayed fifteen times. Yeah, Jesus. And uh, and then yeah, they just both kind of flopped. But oh, sorry. So going back to Horizon Zero Dawn though, um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing, I'm genuinely looking forward to it, and I and I absolutely have to play it. Um, the the main thing which. Which is why overall, like I said, I'm really not trying to complain about it because, like I said, everybody's calling it amazing. And I do – I really do believe the reviews. If if this many people are saying it's good, it obviously has to be, um, you know, because it's coming out in just a little bit over a week. Um, and the whole big point, at least the premise of the game is they put you in a very big sense of mystery right out of the gate. You know what I mean? Um, you know, you don't know why – 
you're there. You right. don't know why the well, machine. Well, she she exactly. seems to not know why she's yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, um, you don't know why any of that's happening, and the whole point is solving it. And right. you know, um, you know, the the review doesn't spoil it or anything, but they definitely say that the conclusion is surprising. So even no matter how yes. much you guess, it's definitely going to surprise you, and that is definitely a gratifying ending. Yeah. It's a gratifying ending to the game. And, now, and also keep in mind, I mean, it's it's Guerrilla Games. Yeah. So it's the same people that do, aside from Shadowfall, mm -hmm. the amazing Killzone franchise. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. had incredible plot twists in the oh, middle of it. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if, they're, if, if this is their first new IP in a really long time. Yeah, well, which is a great turnaround from Killzone 4. Right, and, and like. it's, it's the same engine... For Killzone Shadowfall, which which the graphics were yeah, great the graphics, on, they were amazing. I mean, I remember that was the first game that I played next gen mm -hmm. because I got a PlayStation bundle from like one of those like QVC type places, mm -hmm. and it came with a whole bunch of games, and one of them was Killzone. It was the first game I played. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Let's do this. I want to try the new one, and I just remember going through different parts and like looking at like you know the lighting effects mm -hmm. and the sun oh, and different yeah. things like oh that. Oh my god, it looked and, gorgeous. Yeah, and that if if we can get the same type of thing in this giant open world aspect, like yes, yeah. we've seen trailers, yeah. but we are seeing trailers that or are on cinematic. yeah they're 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 on you know computer screens. And oh phone yeah, screens. I nobody's mean, watching them on I mean, TV. I mean the whole thing so is like, and we'll I mean we're gonna riff about this so much when E3 right before E3 comes out. Yes. But that's that's a whole big issue that I have with trailers is like first of all when we see a lot of trailers nowadays, especially with new IP, it's like don't get me wrong, I want to see it in its best possible quality. Um you know get that full 1080p or now especially 4K. Um, but so many trailers now are so heavily cinematic, it's very misleading. Like, you never know what game you're getting until you actually see gameplay. Right. And sometimes you don't even see that until weeks after. Like, you right. know what I mean? Like, you don't and, see and real gameplay. And a lot of gameplay. the time, seeing that gameplay doesn't even justify what you get in the long run. Which Absolutely. Which is like this. Yeah. Like, I mean, I am beyond intrigued. Like, oh, a, yeah. a lot of people were saying, you know, For Honor is a game that, you know, they won't understand until they play, which is 100% true. Uh, yes, but, I totally agree. But the idea... Putting more time into it, I totally yeah, agree. The idea of going into For Honor versus going into this... Oh, it's completely it's, it's, different. Yeah, this is just like a game that I, I have to wrap my head around. Yes. And I won't do that probably until 20 hours into this game. Well, yeah, they said... Um, they even said roughly two. I mean, the only downside that I've been reading that they kind of complain... I mean, the only minor complaint um, is that they say the side missions are a little less creative. So I'm sure. assuming it's probably going to be like material grabs or just like, hey, there's this one big t-rex in this one area like make sure you kill him or you know what i mean um so it's pretty cool um they also talk about too um the variety so there is completely different tactics of taking down different enemies and there's multiple ways to take down enemies right so certain ways are obviously better but they're not they say they don't hold your hand with it they just present you with something coming at you, and you got to fight it. And if you see a weak spot or if something intrigues you to be like, I wonder if I can break this. Like, there's right. certain monsters where, yeah, you can have them explode to do more damage and take uh, pieces to then use as weapons. There's other ones where, like, if you hit them in a certain spot with an arrow, their wing or arm will fall off. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that is really cool. Um, and like They're I said, definitely going about it in a very unique way. Yes. So. Well, like I said, it looks great um yeah and in addition to metacritic uh, i've got a list here for mm -hmm. few scores destructoids giving it a 7.5 out of 10 game informer give it an 8.75 GameSpot give it a 9 games radar was 4.5 out of 5 giant bomb was five stars ign 9.3 as we mm -hmm. said polygon 9.5 out of 10 videogamer.com 8 out of 10 um so it's definitely getting good reviews and the, meta, yeah. the metacritic review is 88 out of 100 like we said based off of 74 reviews so definitely so it's good. definitely doing good it's, it's substantial it, it's yeah. it's definitely substantial it's definitely uh holding weight also as i'm looking up about the game uh as we mentioned earlier uh ashley birch is aloy yes the voice of aloy uh so for those who aren't familiar with her who is she now? tiny tina yeah from borderlands series which is definitely interesting um yeah and i from the couple of reviews i read um, like I said, they say she kills it. 
Like she's doing an amazing job, which is a very tough position. Um, it reminds me, as actually you were saying about Tomb Raider, um, it kind of reminds me of that setup because it's a standalone female lead, and in almost and this one uh, even more to the extent of almost predominantly solo dialogue. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that well, that type the of the other thing too here that I'm reading now mm-hmm. is making me wonder where this is going to come into play because Lance Reddick who is uh, noted for Quantum Break, Mm -hmm. as well as Fringe and Lost, Mm -hmm. uh, is also a voice actor in this game. So they've got a semi-bigger voice actor to do some male part. Some part, yeah. Now now here's the thing. That could be, I mean, because we speculated this in in, uh, the previous episode um, about potentially, like, there's a village that you find or something like that. But it also could just be a flashback could be a flashback to a doctor who's making the first ai or something you know what i mean there could be there could be a lot of different things um but yeah but the main thing i did want to say though um like i said say they don't say there is no civilization say it is just her yep for for let's say a large portion of the game because that's what it definitely at least appears like sure um i mean for her to be doing a single voice acting role like that and carrying it that strongly because that's i mean i can't even imagine that's very difficult. I mean, you know what I mean, to essentially put a solo role like that. Yeah. You know what I mean, and keep the story going when almost at that point you're almost essentially narrating. Yeah. You know what I mean, and so um, I find that definitely very interesting. But uh, you know, I think that's I think that's phenomenal. And I mean, there, like I said, um, she definitely did an amazing job. If you know a solo character, you know, without a classic cavalcade team. You know what I mean? Because, like, Uncharted, for example, I mean, of course you have Nathan Drake, but, you know, you have his whole group. You know what I mean? Right. With, like, Sully and everybody. So, you know, I think, um, yeah, I just think it, I, I, I love the fact that it's new and, you know what I mean, they're introducing something like that. But yet again, it's like they're introducing new, but it's not here's also a group of characters that fit these stereotypes. Right. Also, the lead character is something we haven't seen before. Right. Ever. Oh yeah. You know definitely. what I mean? A, a, a lead female role in a post post apocalyptic setup. Yeah. You know what I mean? In like this weird. Yeah. It's it's this. Which according to uh, the official, um, like uh, synopsis of the game, mm-hmm. um, it says that the world decayed mm-hmm. and came back over a millennium. So we are oh, seeing wow. like post post-apocalyptic like over by like a thousand years. years wow so that's absolutely insane that's crazy um, but i did look up on imdb uh the cash list mm-hmm. and there are quite a few other humans uh mm-hmm. that we will see in this game um including another person uh, of fame david harewood who currently plays martian manhunter and supergirl um oh. as well as jb blanc who's done a lot of different voice acting and stuff like that um, but his biggest stuff was uh, Breaking Bad as well as War Dogs. Hmm. Um, he was also a clerk in Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, you know, good for him. Pretty He's neat. been in some stuff. Yep. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, we've got, uh, you know, a, a pretty good voice cast. Yeah. Well, um, that's, so, yeah. So, we're definitely going to see people. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, at, at the end, of, like I said, you have to to explain what happened. Yes. You know what I mean? And yet again, these might be people we see in game because I'm like, I'm assuming. It could be people that we eventually fight. I mean, we do yeah, have human enemies. That's absolutely true. I didn't even think about that. Could have some dude on top of a mech T Rex. One dude who's tamed. <laughs> it them. would be great if you had mech T Rex versus mech T Rex oh, and you had the dudes that make that. Yo. That'd be great. Yo. Horizon Zero Jurassic World. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like uh, when you play Gears 4 and you ride on the back of the Brumach. Yes. Spoilers. <laughs> or wait, no, that, that was Gears Three. Gears Four. Gears you're 3. in the big. Uh, you're yes, in the big. Uh, you're in the big robot. Yeah, the big robots. Yep, robot on. Yeah, that, but that time it wasn't robot on robot. Robot yeah. on swarm. <laughs> yeah, robot yeah, on robot on robot on tentacle porn. <laughs> let's be honest. Let's be honest, people. Let's be honest. Let's uh, let's just break through that other side there. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, like I said, um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely gonna check it out. I'm excited. Um, even still, personally, I mean, just game playing wise, just to update everybody. Um, still, at least for me, I'm still just digging through my RPGs. Still yep. going through Digimon. I'm just about to beat Tales of Berseria. Um, and even after, I mean, personally, because um, I would love to at some point. I don't know. I'll probably, just talking out loud, I'll probably uh, do some type of review on the game. I really would love to. Uh, but I'll probably do in some type of point five overtime thing that yeah. I'll do. You know what I mean? Because I definitely just do want to talk about it more because um, 
the Tales of franchise for me personally, I've always really loved. Um, but I'll be honest, the the past couple games have not stood out. Tales of Zestiria sadly just bored me to tears, and it, it's very depressing because um, a lot of stuff from Zestiria is actually in this one, which is another thing too. It's very rare that a uh, that a franchise like that which is almost Final Fantasy type in the sense of they're all so different. You know what I mean? Like all take place usually different universes and none of them are even correlated at all. But these two directly correlate. Yeah. One takes place multiple years after the other one. So That's it's cool. very, you know what I mean? Um, and the thing is... It's almost it, like how Final Fantasy does, like Final Fantasy 13 and then 13 do. Yes. But it, but even in this one, what's uh, one thing that I thought was really cool is one of the quote-unquote spirits in Zestiria is um, literally a character that you encounter multiple times in Berseria. So is Berseria a prequel band of Zestiria? Sequel. Or... Okay, so how is a spirit in... I, I don't really know how the game works. So so, so the how... whole thing is, without spoiling too much, yeah. so the whole thing is there's there's spirits right. in Zestiria. Okay. Okay, and one of the spirits, multitude of years later, which I don't want to say how many years later because I don't like spoil timeline stuff, shows up in Berseria. As a spirit or a character? Well, as a character. Okay. Now, by the way, okay, so... Because I would think spirits mean that they're dead. No, spirit, okay. spirits... That's what threw me off. Yeah, spirits are just like people. Okay. Um, But this, like, only certain people can see them. But when you think of them, uh, they are okay. a full human being. Gotcha. Because gotcha, um, gotcha. even in this one, in Berseria, there's characters called Moloks. And Moloks are just like... They're, they're essentially... Just like human beings, like you and me. Okay. Uh, but they have more of a. You know, where everybody thought we were animals. Exactly. <laughs> but, there's, but they're more. But they have more of a magical attunement, um, and they're usually reincarnated from people. Okay. Sure. Um, and like I said, they have more. Er, they have uh, natural element properties, kind of like you know, if you're reborn, you either have a base element of like you know, earth, wind, water, fire. You know what I mean? So. Um, but like I said, the spirits that are in Zestiria ends up being a Moloch in Berseria. Okay. So they haven't really talked about, though, if that is always the same thing, if there was a transformation, if just because of the time lapse later there's just a new name. You know what I mean? So um, so it's pretty interesting. But then even one thing, too, that they go off, uh, that they go off with as well is like, um, you know, like what classifies – someone is being a human you right. know what i mean so like you know they're a spirit or a moloch but at the same time they're they're they look like people they have emotions and feelings and all that stuff you know uh, a lot of enemies or other people in the game use them as like tools they like control them like mentally like they literally like not erase their mind but control their bodies and have them do what they want and certain molochs break free and a bunch of stuff happens but um but they bring about a lot of questions i like i said i'm, I'm going off on a tangent now which i apologize but um, it's definitely something I want to review. This one has absolutely stood out to me. And, you know, like I've said, even on the first episode, I've been super into RPGs since forever. Um, yeah. I just definitely want to make the presence known. I mean, you're, that. you're always talking about Tales. That's right? what I'm saying. So. I, I've been talking about it since it came out. Um, so I would really love, like I said, um, at some point later on to go really in-depth with it. But, like I said, even when I first brought up the game when we were talking about when it came out, I'm not ignorant to the fact a lot of people don't play it. Yeah. Most of the time, I'll be 100% honest, I'm talking to a wall. But just for, <laughs> if I mean, if anybody genuinely is interested to play a very anime-esque, story-driven game with a little bit of set combat and just, like, really want to dive into that type of story, that is the perfect fucking game. So, anyway, sorry. Cool. I just, no. you know, older game, we should be talking about newer stuff, but like I said, I just felt that. Well, I if you want to talk about newer stuff, continue on with your anime thing. Because we've oh got my a, God. a very big game coming well, it's actually, tomorrow. The, so the worst part is, is this is uh, breaking the fourth wall a little bit. This is the first thing I brought up to Jeremy yes. that we needed yep. to talk about. And it's yep. so funny because I went off on such a tangent I almost forgot. Yeah, we're 53 minutes in. I almost <laughs> said 53 hours. <laughs> <laughs> 53, 53 hours on our 60-hour <laughs> live stream. Uh, no, Berserk. Berserk is going to be... Uh, my. Okay, so I'm going to try to stay grounded here, so bear okay. with me. My hype level but is... Before, before we even get into this, okay. I have no idea what this game is. Yeah, so I'm This a, is one of those games yes. that, like, if you just play games and you don't dig into everything else surrounding it, like, I don't dig into, like, Tales stuff. I don't dig... Like, I don't yes. play Naruto because I don't watch Naruto. Naruto. So, like, this is one of those games where I have no... It's just a game yes. coming out. And sadly, the worst part is... Um, 
because Tails, for example, that one you could play. Right. Oh, e- yeah. And even with them linking stuff to Zestiria, Berseria, you yeah, could play. And I, I and want be, to at some be, point. Yeah, it'd be totally good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be fine. Uh, Berserk. The Tales games just require so much time. Yes. And time is something I don't oh, yeah. currently have oh, no, a lot of. No, like I said. Yeah. Definitely, I definitely, um, that's on my list. Berserk, I bought it. I have yeah. Tales. Berserk, I'll be honest. Berserk, I absolutely feel like it's a game you need to already know. Yeah. Um, they are going to absolutely do backstory. Well, they, what's, what's the full title? It's Berserk and the Band of Hawks? Yes. Right? Okay. Exactly, yep. Um, so, in my opinion, I feel like you should you should know more before you go into it. Like I said, they are absolutely going to do backstory. Um, not to spoil, because it... I mean, for a lot of people that haven't checked it in, this is one I definitely do not want to spoil. This has one of the most absolute... Th- no, I'm, I'm already lying. This has the absolute what the fuck moment in any anime ever. This is wow. when you think of the mic drop or jaw dropping moment of oh my god, I cannot believe a said thing is happening. Yeah. This is the fucking anime game whatever. It's fucking bananas. Okay. I, even if even if um you don't play the game or anything like that, I, I recommend this anime to anybody. I mean, it is a very... I mean, just to hear. So, just for a heads up for anybody who hasn't, and also I can educate Jeremy on this yes. a little bit. So, um, just like a five-minute kind of setup here. So, you have Guts, who is the main character. He's a dude on the cover. Love his name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he holds a cloud S sword. Okay. Half the... Yes. Co- yeah, because yeah. I've seen the cover. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So, that he's swinging sense. around this massive fucking sword. He ends up just being a solo mercenary dude with a pretty fucked up past that you'll learn about. Um, Griffin who is the other, uh, like, you know, said main character. Sure. Um, you know, ends up finding him. They end up kind of having this battle because uh, Griffiths has this whole band of the Hawk, which is a whole essentially kind of group of, you know, hired, I don't want to say mercenaries, but, you know, hired group for said spots. And, um, you know, Griffin's whole thing is that he wants to rule a kingdom. Okay. That's his whole setup. And he knows Guts is a very strong warrior, so he wants Guts to join his band of Hawk. Okay. So they have this battle, and whoever wins, so if if uh, if Griffin wins, Guts has to join. And if Guts wins, I think uh, Griffin becomes like a slave or something like that. Okay. Um, this is the only spoiler I will give anybody. Spoiler, Guts loses and then has to partake. Um, and then there is a whole bunch of epic events it's a very medieval type setup at the beginning okay stuff gets very different and supernatural way later on okay um it's it's phenomenal the only other thing i want to give everybody a heads up on is this is the absolute most r-rated potentially borderline x-rated anime you'll almost ever watch wow um and without going and i've watched a lot of anime and i'm not talking about the like tentacle porn type like weird I'm just saying it is just very, you know what I mean. There is there's abs- there's sex scenes in the show, you know what I mean. They they do they do an absolutely respectable job of most, you know what I mean, of the right. setups. Um, they absolutely and and here's another important thing in it too. It, um, there's not a single scene like that that does it just to do it. Okay. All of them are very important to what is happening. If, okay. if there is a scene that makes you feel uncomfortable with it, because there's a couple scenes that try to make you do that, there is a reason. You know what okay. I mean? So, um, it. How that's... many seasons is it? Okay, here's the very difficult thing. Okay. I'm just gonna tell you there's none, because okay. here's the problem. Berserk is an anime that started in the '80s. Okay. Okay. This is also coming from a guy from the listeners at home. This is I've watched even the original show. Okay. And the biggest problem is with Berserk is there's no ending. Okay. Um, there is. And there's also two time frames. So okay. like I said, just to, that's I gave you the introduction. I'm not right. gonna go into everything, but sure. So there's um there's a whole pre insert event, um, and then there's a whole post insert event. It's a couple years later. Okay. Um and the whole game, um, which I have to start talking about the game at some point because Jesus Christ we're <laughs> gonna talk about, but at least let's go for the anime for a little. Um so yeah, so there's two setup events. The show went the show did it very interesting when it first came out. Okay. The show started post event. While the show was going, it gave you 
events that happened in the past. So like flashbacks. Exactly. Okay. So eventually while you're watching... And this is when it started in the 80s. Yes. Okay. So while you were watching it or reading it, the manga came out at the same time. So while you were uh, happening in the quote-unquote current timeline, you were learning stuff about the past, pieced everything together, and then hit you with an event near the end of where it was going, not the end of the series by any standard, where you were like, oh, fuck. Now a character that you met at the beginning of the anime is now so much more important because gotcha. of all the stuff you learned that about in the past. Okay. Now, the problem was, too, with the manga especially, because they stopped animating after a set point, the manga chapters kept continuing. Very scarce. Um, okay. A problem with some older animes, Berserk being probably the most noticeable. Um, they were coming out with manga chapters for quite some time. And then the 2000s, they hit a really weird wall. Because in the 80s and 90s, they were coming out, but they were coming out a lot more scarce. Now, manga chapters come out once every two weeks or once a week even sometimes. Right. Um, back in the day for 80s and 90s stuff, it was probably about a chapter once a month. Okay. Um, but I'm going to put a scary thing in perspective for you. Um, the chapters technically, in super air quotes, still come out. Um, actually, the latest chapter it from today's date came out about four months ago. Wow, okay. Now, to put in perspective, they were putting out chapters every other month for about six months. And, you know, like I said, so we're talking about last year, though, of 2016. Not right. to fuck people up. But to put in perspective, though, Jeremy, they picked it up again. Okay. The gap of time from when they last put one out was in 2008. Wow. There was a eight-motherfucking-year hiatus of nothing of just wow. fucking no progression yeah. and the worst part is like i said it's still very scarce and we still don't know where it's ending but the whole thing is so well, it's still a thing absolutely and like i said this game hopefully is going to perpetuate a bigger buzz for it that that's okay. at least my hope um now to get people's hype back on it because a lot of people who are even into the series now have not watched the original show um, you know, a lot of people have read the manga, um, but a lot of people haven't watched the original show. It's, it's very tough to find, too. It's not something easy to buy. You either have to, honest to God. So it's not something on Crunchyroll? Or like no, Funimation. not, at, not okay. at least for right now. Um, but uh, what's it called? Oh, so what they're doing now is um, like a couple other animes are doing. Um, one I know you haven't watched, but one you probably heard of is Evangelion. Yes, yeah. Perfect. So Evangelion had an original show. Yep. They did that. So now what they're doing is, like like with Berserk, is to get a newer audience, they're putting out movies, which oh, are okay. recapping the series. So instead of putting oh. out episode, 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 they put out a whole movie that covers the first five to ten episodes. Okay. So Berserk, like that. so, cool. so Berserk did that. So they put out three movies. Now these three movies tell the story differently. Okay. These three stories just tell you the prequel. Okay. Nothing about the post event. So it's all the flashback. It's all the flashback. Okay. So for OG people like myself who have watched it, the second I start watching it, I go, oh, we get a full synopsis of just the backstory. But That's in the back cool. of my mind, I know there's a current event happening. It is different, though, for people who are now just watching, watching it the it. first time because they just think now it is one packed linear story, right. which isn't wrong. And to be honest, it's more of a clear, concise way to tell it. Right. So, you know what sure. I mean? So I'm not going to argue with that. Um, so they go up to, at least for the movies, they go up to an event. Okay. And then that event triggers off everything else. Sure. Now, what they're doing is um currently like i said so they're doing they well like they did the movies yep sorry now they're doing a show again okay and the show is after the event and the show is a direct continuation off those first three movies so is the event do we see the event in the move in the movies yes okay that is literally the last thing that happens okay. in the third movie and now the show is going to pick up right after after exactly so the game is where i don't know Okay. So here's what's funny. So here's what's funny. I like that answer. Here's what's funny. So not to spoil too much, but the game case has a lot of images from the event. Okay. And um, another thing, which I don't want to spoil too much, so I'm not even going to say what they are, but a lot of the enemies in this game are definitely from post-event. 
Okay. But I absolutely think it now this is just my opinion. I think it's going to be both. I think it is going to show a lot of the beginning. They have to. Okay. Because this this whole event it's too big to not have the build up for. You okay. can't just show the event and then do post. Right. It'll ruin the whole experience for everybody. Um now, let me talk about the game a little bit without talking about a, a story that I can't even talk about. Right. <laughs> so this game, um, Bandai Namco, main thing, um, and then Koei Tecmo. So yep. we have Dynasty Warriors classic setup. So it is literally Guts. Pretty great. Yeah, so it's literally Guts main character fighting hordes of an enemy. Okay. <laughs> like you know, I, said, I gotta say, like, you know, I've the only anime I've ever really watched is Dragon Ball Z. I've watched yeah. a little bit of Naruto. I've watched a little bit. I mean, I'm currently still watching Dragon Ball Super. Yeah. If you count Pokemon and Digimon, I've watched those. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm extremely intrigued. Dude, it's amazing. And what's really nice is um, at least... Um, for, for those of you that can't see us, I'm, like, sitting here... I haven't like it's fully really absorbed. left. Yeah, like, Nick's, <laughs> yeah. Nick's like You're talking. Not contact, like I'm still yeah. like I'm just sitting here like paying attention very intently. Um, and the cool part about it though, too, Jeremy, like honestly, is um, you can catch up so quick because of those three movies. You watch yeah, three watch movies. movies. Now, are the movies as close to being X-rated as the original show was? Or Absolutely. Is it, okay, so it's not they didn't like dumb it down or anything. Absolutely not. Okay. Cool. Absolutely not. Um, the series is known for it. And they're never going to break that stride. Cool. Um, especially, and I'm just saying this as well too, I do not think the game will either. Oh, wow. The okay. game very much, I think, is going to push that as well. Okay. Now, and that comes to gore, sex, everything. Like, yeah. that's everything. This is very, it's it, also as well, I mean, like, of course, I was talking about sex before. Um, I mean, when you initially is, said X-rated, I immediately thought, like, brutality. Yeah, but yeah. that's, uh, it is horrifically brutal. Wow. Um, okay. You know what I mean? Like, you're seeing, I mean, like, episode one, at least, of even, like, or not episode one, what am I saying? Like, first ten minutes of the first movie, Guts is lobbing a dude's head right off. And, wow. I mean, you're getting full, like, blood out, you know what I mean? Like, you know. Um, it's almost, it. <laughs> and funny enough, it's almost very, uh, I always call it samurai-esque, where, you okay. know, you have the head come off and then the fountain of blood. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they definitely go over the top with it. Um, but it's cool. I mean, at the same time, it has to be over the top. A dude is swinging around a sword twice his size like you know what i mean like it has to be it yeah. has to be absurd um but the game looks great I'm, I'm very excited for it um yet again though very niche you know what i mean you have you have a major anime market um and i feel like this is the game that had to come out for it i feel like this is the perfect type of game um because even uh originally um they came out with a berserk game on sega dreamcast oh wow <laughs> Um, that's a that's a throwback. That right was there. a third person. Sega. Yeah, that was a third person uh, run around hack and slash, like this one, but not even close to Dynasty Warriors. S. You kind of had maybe four or five villains on the screen, do a couple combos, take them out. This one is going way more over the top. So this is a lot Dynasty Warriors. Like. Yes, hundred okay. percent. Um, they haven't shown a ridiculous amount of gameplay, but they have absolutely shown enough where I know exactly what I'm getting. Cool. Um, for the listeners at home as well, I've played. I have played almost every Dynasty Warriors. I played a lot. Um, a lot of the spinoffs as well, like the Gundam franchises, personally. Oh, yes. Oh, personally, my, God, my yes. favorite. I'm a super Gundam fanatic. Um, on a 10-second tangent, I've also <laughs> been buying all of the... Because the whole big thing with Gundam last year and this year is their slow goal is to reprint every Gundam franchise in Blu-ray. Oh, wow. And I've literally been purchasing every single one in blu-ray and been going off on that um oh, see i remember so you telling me you, you would like have to go pick up gundam at different points it didn't like yeah. dawn on me that you were picking up like reprinted blu-rays yeah it, that's fantastic that's what i'm saying it's crazy and then what's even uh what's even worse at least for my wallet is most <laughs> of them most of the especially the og series and even some of the spinoff ones they're 50 plus episodes oh, yeah. so it's just not one bundle it's part one you yeah. know what I mean? And then part two. So, you know what I mean? You're laying out a lot of money. <laughs> so what I'm saying is I'm poor and help me. No. <laughs> but, um. Uh, no. We're starting a GoFundMe for yeah. the <laughs> But, uh. Find it the oh, God, point. no. That wouldn't help anything. <laughs> <laughs> that would, uh, that would only just, uh, make everything worse. See, and this is another reason why I don't really want to dive too far into anime in my life. See, here's the, here's the thing, I'm though. I'm just going to want It's fantastic. I wouldn't regret, I wouldn't regret a single move I've made. 
again. Now, see, here's the thing. Here's where I feel like I'm a lot different from a lot of people. Um, of course, I just go spend money on guitars, so it's not really. Like, yeah, see, <laughs> see a lot. The same see, I'm a lot different from a lot of people. Um, for animes that impact me a lot, um, we're going off on a whole tangent here. Yeah, I apologize, by the way, but um, for me personally with anime, um, if one, if one impacts me a lot, like one that I number one would want to rewatch, and one that especially makes me really like think, or or just even one that I thoroughly enjoy, one that tells a very great story that sticks with me. Um, I feel like personally I have to own it. Um, yeah. I, ju- I it, and this is just me. I just appreciate it so much more when I own it. I know I can watch it whenever I want, and it's mine. Like you know what I mean? Like it's it's one that I could be hanging out with a group of friends, and I bring up lightly, and then go, "We have absolutely got to watch this." I I don't like the fact of like, well, is it on Crunchyroll? Maybe it's on Netflix. I don't want to even have that option. Yeah, I have it. I want to put it in someone's hand and go, "Please watch this." This altered my life in some way. You absolutely need to experience this feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's for me. Like I said, um, a lot. I mean, a plethora of people I talk to. I mean, that's how um, I'm with movies. Yeah, exactly. Like, and the then, same and, thing. And, and, and other people are too. Um, but yeah, anime is. Um, I I relate to video games a lot. It's it is a expensive habit if yeah. you dedicate money to it. You know, and some people that's that is the fantastic thing though about Crunchyroll on the flip side is pay a subscription, watch all the anime without spending all the money. You know what I mean? Watch as many times as you want for... Hashtag we are not sponsored by country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, and, 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 you know, and other services, like I said, like with Netflix and stuff like that, which we're sponsored by no one. Just yeah, yeah, by, yeah. sponsored by no one. Hashtag please. no sponsor. Yeah, hashtag please sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, you know what I mean? They, they add great services like that, so that totally eliminates, you know, 90% of the cost, but... Um, you know, just for me, I'd, I'd rather own it. If yeah. I have the option, I'd rather own it. Like I said, if it's impactful enough. There is a plethora of anime oh, I've yeah. watched without owning, just to clarify. Yeah. Um, but Berserk is definitely one of those ones where I had to own it. Especially the movie series, I, I own all three of those. Yeah. You know what I mean? When the show um, the show has wrapped up its season one of the newer one, but they haven't even close to announce when a, a Blu-ray is coming out or anything like that. Because um, if I'm not mistaken, um, they have not put out a dub for it yet either so okay. i have just watched the new show so and sub the yeah. movies are all dubbed um oh, okay. but, the, but the uh but the show I is see, not. i think i'd rather watch it subbed personally it, it's tricky um i don't even want to start that debate right now on this podcast because well, okay well no no no, no i'm not, not, I'm not in saying, total oh, i'm yeah, just yeah, saying yeah. <laughs> the way that you're explaining this to me the way this anime works yeah i feel like this is an anime that i'd want to watch subbed versus dubbed because I feel like the initial feeling that this anime has with the characters that were brought into it the way it was made in Japan might have more of an impact with the way it is rather than it being dubbed. Because sometimes the dubs get weird. Like with Dragon Ball. Yes. Like uh, I watched all of Dragon Ball. So yes. Dragon Ball Z I watched dubbed. Dubbed, of course. Probably the biggest mistake of my life. I wish I would have kept watching it subbed. Because the characters... Really? Yeah. I, see, personally, I love DBZ dub. Or, well, yeah, I, dubbed. I, like, I like it dubbed. But it the issue is that I got so attached to the characters as they were while they were yes. subbed. Oh, I got yeah. new voice actors. I got new voice yes. types. It was just weird. Well, that, that's the, the... You really can't mix and match. Right. That's a whole thing. Like um, like a perfect example for Which me. is why I'm watching Dragon Ball Super right now subbed. And that's bothering me. Because then I watch DBZ with grown up adult... Adult, uh, adult Goku. Adult. Yes. And now and I'm hearing... going back to Japan. Yeah. it's just... Yeah. Um like two very good kind of modern examples of subbed that i love better okay so hold on hold on let's take a step back and then we'll go into it for a sec so i'm just gonna like clear the air and this might be a very unpopular opinion generally if i have an option to watch dubbed i will now fucking half the people just unsubscribe but (laughs) here's the thing that i am not disclaiming that certain subs are indefinitely better better than dubs like uh, like I said, two modern examples: Kill a Kill and Sword Art Online. In my opinion, okay. trash dubs, trash. Like Kill a Kill, especially if you watch an episode subbed, the dub almost looks like a parody spoof. That, in my opinion, is just how bad. Um, I don't even know. This sounds horrifically insulting at this point. Um, I don't even know the main voice actor for Kirito. The dub. For sword art, insulting. If you compare oh, the Japanese subbed voice, amazing. When he's having these action, like um, even at the end of episode one, when 
uh, when Kirito's fighting this, like, epic boss, and the whole time he's dual-wielding swords and he's swinging, but he knows he needs to go, like, faster and be more, like, he's just, he's screaming faster and that sub, you, I mean, there's, jet, like, he is screaming at the top of his lungs to fucking go. Yeah. And you just hear the dub, he's just like, I need to go faster. Faster. <laughs> and it You're just. You're too slow. Yeah, and it just, oh my god, it's so, it literally, it took me, it slapped me in the face, it took me out of it so much. You know what I mean? And you can't do that. Right. You know what I mean? You have to be invested. With with something like that, you know what I mean? And, and in that particular scene, he he could potentially die. They have to keep you emotionally invested. It, it, it's supposed to be a scene that fucking draws you in and keeps you there. Yeah. It's the first episode. It has to fucking draw you in. Right. And go like, yeah, there's 20 fucking more episodes, but this is the one that you go, holy fuck, episode two, where is it? I need to watch it. You know what I mean? And I don't feel like the dubs do that. Um, I agree. You know, but yeah, but those those subtitle ones are amazing. But DBZ is a perfect one, like I said. For me, I love the dub. I think right. the dub's fantastic. Um, if, if I probably would have yeah. watched the original Dragon Ball dubbed, I probably wouldn't have been yeah. that weird. Cause it, yeah, because even, yeah, the even the dub for it's amazing. Yeah. I love the dub for uh, for Dragon Ball. It's just yeah. when I watched it, I don't even remember how I watched it. It might have been. Yeah, because. It might have so, actually been Netflix, and it was just subbed. Well, yeah, because a, uh, a lot. Oh well, no, probably not. The the reason I bring that up, it might have even been Hulu, because the, uh, the you know what that is what because Netflix, um, at least for anime watching, almost I mean when it hits Netflix, it almost guaranteed has to be dubbed. dubbed right. you, they always give you that option. Hulu it is typically Hulu. the one. Yep. Where you I remember almost it being see it episode one sub, episode one dub. Dub. Yes. And it only went up to so like seventeen many episodes dubbed. that were dubbed, and, and then, then the, the rest, rest were all subbed. subbed. Yeah. So I was just like, well, I'm just gonna watch the whole thing subbed. Then. Exactly. That's why a lot. I mean, that's why especially a lot of sub or yeah, especially a lot of sub lovers. Now, also keep in mind too, Hulu. I watched Dragon Ball Z before I watched Dragon Ball. Yes. Because I was a kid. Of course. So. Yeah. Cause you I watched, watched on Toonami it, like everybody else. Right. Absolutely. I watched it dubbed, then went to subbed, then went back to dubbed. And then we're like, now I'm at it. subbed again. And, yeah. and I'm just, I never watched GT and I not give a shit. But oh, now I'm just that's like. Fair. I mean, G, yeah, GT mixed a lot of people. Well, Me, GT also doesn't count anymore. No, of course not. Um, my whole Thank thing, God. My whole thing with GT, here's the thing. Like, and don't get me wrong, I will trash as much as anybody else. I just don't like the fact that, like, people call the entire franchise of GT, like, complete bullshit. When, don't get me wrong, there is more problems than solutions. Like, there's yes. more problems than benefits. Sorry. There was a lot of um, good things in there. Yeah, they, they, they introduced a lot. Like, yeah. Kid Goku, though, I didn't yeah. need again. No. That was dumb. The didn't fact that. that Trunks wasn't wielding the sword, even yep. when they showed him Kid Trunks getting a sword with the whole, um, uh, with the whole Wrath of the Dragons movie. And yeah. then ends up not having a fucking sword. Yep. And he looks like some derpy archaeologist piece of shit. And th- yeah, there's a lot of problems. I'm not going to go off on it. Um... But yeah, you know what I mean? So I'm glad that Super's an answer for it. Yeah. But there were cool stuff. Like, I loved uh, Super 17 for GT. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was super cool. I thought the end, keyword, end of Shadow Dragons was cool. Yeah. But the whole beginning arc was bullshit. And well, then the, we also had Super Saiyan 4. Exactly. Well, Super Saiyan 4 was fucking rad. And end of Baby Saga was rad. What yes. I didn't like was the 15,000 fucking episodes beforehand yeah. of Goku going on a bunch of dumb planet adventures. I was like, this isn't why I watched this. Yeah. And and the no. problem was, I think, I think GT's problem was... Um, you know, let's try to make... Let's try to go back to the Dragon well, Ball you, fun... You know how GT started, right? No. Like, so okay. So well, G- maybe, but GT like. was the product of somebody wrote fan fiction. And yes. Yes. I they heard this. really I heard this. liked it. Mm-hmm. So they were like, okay, let's kind of do something with that. And they, you know, the public found out that they were taking fan fiction and making it part of the series. Yeah. So then more and more people wrote fan fiction and sent it to them. And eventually, GT became a collection of fan fiction, fiction. combined together yeah. to make a story. Well, the whole, which is why Omega Shenron looks the way he does, does in GT. Yeah. Well, the whole, uh, the whole other issue, too, was um, even in the original, by the way, even in original DBZ, fun fact, Akira, uh, Akira Toriyama did not like a lot of the stuff that happened in Z. Right, yeah. He did – pretty much he had full fundamental control up until the Frieza saga. Yes. And then stuff got weird. Um, like a prime example was Cell. Um, Cell had his three transformations, but his transformations were supposed to be a lot more progressive. Or right. I'm sorry, were supposed to take a lot longer. Cell was oh, supposed okay. to be a way longer-term villain. I mean, don't get me wrong. He was still – he lasted for two seasons. It was a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, but like his uh, phase two, for example, was supposed to be almost a whole arc. Of right. him just in phase two, 
Um, but apparently, you know, the directors and stuff didn't like his appearance. So they said, jump him to phase three quicker. You yeah. know what I mean? And have him, you know, and have his design look a little bit different. Boo's another example. Yeah. Boo, Boo was supposed to take forever. Boo, yeah. Well, and then originally, when Boo was first concepted, he wasn't, he was supposed to be almost a garlic junior. He was supposed yeah. to go through a couple phases, but very quickly. Right. And then they said, nope, fuck that. You got to do this way. And then the problem was Fat Boo was supposed to be a longer term problem. Yep. And then they go, nope, you have to change him up. Like the whole thing about DBZ is. And then Kid Boo. Yeah. And then transformations. And then. Uh, Toriyama's whole thing was to ha- Kid Boo was supposed to be the end result regardless. The problem right. was fucking Super Boo and then absorbing all the fucking people and then him having these full boring conversations when the whole point of even early, like, here's the problem. Early Boo and Kid Boo have the same thing. Yes. They both have this weird, you can't even, like, understand them and that's what makes him more scary. Right. He is a fucking primal, weird thing that is fucking coming at you and his fucking strength is unmeasurable. You can't measure it. Yeah. I mean, Kid Buu fucking destroys Earth. Well, I mean, the other thing too, Majin Vegeta wasn't supposed to happen. No, but that is one I'm so glad that Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, one of my favorite. And then Oob wasn't supposed to happen. No, Oob was and not supposed to happen. And Oob happened. And Oob happened. And nobody needed Oob. No, but yeah. <laughs> I could I mean, do without they, him. They tried. I mean, the biggest problem was I honestly would have... Once they introduced Oob, I was fine. The yeah. problem was they gave him the shaft during the baby saga and then had a bullshit fusion, and yeah. he still got his ass kicked. And it was like, why did you even introduce this TN yamcha S character <laughs> if he's just going to get his fucking ass kicked when he's supposed to be a reincarnation of Majin Buu, yeah. who's, at this point, the strongest villain in the franchise, yeah. and he gets fucking mollywopped in 10 seconds. Like, the fight is embarrassing. And it's like, why even highlight that character for him to have one spotlight and immediately get snubbed. Yeah. Like, what the like, fuck's no the point? point? Like, the, another prime example... It was they, almost like they had an episode quota and needed to fill it. Well, here's the other thing. And then you have, like, Super Boo, which is a perfect example of Gohan doing all this motherfucking training. And he goes Mystic Gohan, which is great. Yeah. He attains so much of a power, he doesn't even need to go Super Saiyan. His natural power is beyond what his transformation state would be, which yeah. is fucking amazing. That's ball. Yeah, it's like, great. That's great. We waited the whole time in between the whole Team Gohan you know, whooping Cell and being like, where is this moment again? Like, where is he going to kick ass again? And we think we're going to get it, and he has it for 10 seconds, and then fucking gets eaten. Yep. And then yet again, and then fucking even in Super and shit, he's a fucking nerd half the goddamn time. <laughs> he's wearing a fucking tracksuit in yep. Revenge of F, and it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, Jesus. No, Resur- Resurrection. Resurrection F. <laughs> Jesus Christ, sorry. Oh, my God. I'm, like, fucking up titles now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is time we should move on from anime. I know. Jesus. We've been talking about anime, anime. now for 40 minutes. Now we're just riffing on DBZ. Yeah. Um, okay, so. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. so Super rewind. Rewind. Berserk, rewind. Berserk looks Berserk. great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Berserk's a game. Berserk's a game so, that looks uh, just, pretty just cool. Just to let everybody know. Uh, the, we anime wasn't even part of this, like part of our topic. It absolutely was not breaking so this the fourth is, wall. This is like how you know how we do things. So yes, uh, well, yeah. we, well, we also um, I was talking to Jeremy about it too for a while. Um, that we should definitely get some type of anime focused, yeah, either content that we do on this podcast or definitely have some type of sidebar. Like you guys have already seen uh, one of the overtime editions, which yes. uh, we will have more of. Oh, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, we might add in like a massive uh, Mass Effect. Jesus, yeah. we might add in uh, like an anime. Uh, yeah, type. especially too. I mean, please, this is the time. Like, comment. Like, let us know what you. Yeah, guys let us like. know if you want to hear. If it. you don't want to hear anime, I'll clearly shut the hell up about it. If that's something you would love for me to go into, and more people, by the way, too. Um, it's great for having Jeremy on, especially well being someone who's kind of outside the loop. But especially because believe me, I'm learning a lot. Yeah, but also too, I mean, that's where um, we can bring on a lot more guests that have watched a lot more anime. Yeah, you know what I mean, and still ha- obviously have us two on, um, but have more people to have more of a dynamic conversation on. But yeah. like I said, that's definitely something that um, we're leaving up to the viewers on that. Yeah, let us know. Comment, you know what I mean. Send us stuff for it. Um, yeah, that me personally, and I probably speak for Jeremy too. I would love to hear people talk about especially oh, yeah. too if anime is something you want to hear and especially what animes i will go off on anything you yeah know what I mean? or just oh. what you want to hear yes in ge- yes of course yeah. in general yeah not just yay or nay on anime anything <laughs> that we don't talk about please yeah. please let us know yeah just uh like 
don't tell us to discuss like the World Cup or something because we're not gonna. No, um, we're, world, yeah, world events, know. politics, what have you. Th- yeah. These are things I avoid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those, music, those are things we don't. Know. Music is the only taboo I will speak of. Yes. You know what Speaking I mean? of music, well, let's go off on that tangent real quick. Okay, here you go. Because it, it's not. This is so. This is my area of expertise. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, don't so, get me wrong. Me and Jeremy usually bond very well on both our plethora. <laughs> But yes, I would absolutely pass the torch off to you over the yeah, music like, repertoire. By, by night when I'm not recording here, uh, I, I'm a musician out playing gigs with people and uh, music is just like a super important part of my life. Yeah, at the, um, at, at the end of this, I'll remind you, you got to plug yourself. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You gotta do. Um, but uh, I'm actually getting a music tattoo here in a couple of days uh, on my arm, which is pretty cool. But anyway, yeah, uh, shit you don't need to know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what is cool that we do need, I personally feel like we should bring up, mm-hmm. is the fact that Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, which people who may not be familiar are Beatles. Are Beatles which fucking, two of the if Beatles. you live in a goddamn cell or fucking gutter. The I mean, there were people you? that thought Kanye West was giving McCartney a D- career. Don't even. Don't even start. Just oh, saying, my Lord. Just saying. There are people out there that, that do believe that. Jesus. Regardless, Paul yeah. McCartney and Ringo Starr, the only two surviving Beatles, yep. uh, are back in the studio. Which is awesome. Uh, making music. It's we don't so, know what they're doing. We don't know. I'm all for it. I mean, I know. All yeah, for it. I'm just like, I'm having like a music orgasm. I mean, here's the like thing. Just, I mean, McCartney's been doing a lot of solo stuff. Yeah. Ringo has, but not recently. I saw I saw Ringo. Yes. I saw Ringo like eight months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ringo was playing with uh, the guitar player, uh, I believe, from uh, Asia and the oh, keyboard wow. player from the original uh, Carlos Santana touring yes, band. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, the bass player from... Um, uh, crap. I forget their name. Jeremy's got sheep. They do broken wings. Um, Take these broken wings and yeah. learn to fly again. All right, there we go. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we have. Um, I want to say it's Mr. Mister, but I don't think that's right. It's not Toto. No, it's not. No, no but he was there too. <laughs> Toto was there yes. too, people. Yes. What was he? What? Uh, the uh, um, They had another... Um, drummer. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. He was helping out. He was from Toto. From Toto. Um, wow. And he got up and sang Africa. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh, it, it was It was. That's great. so funny. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. And um, uh, Todd Federer, I think his last name is, was yeah. there, too. Yes, I know um, I don't, he kind of did like his own like original stuff for a while. Yeah. But uh, yeah, anyway, anyway. Mr. Mister, 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 Mister. Good. Okay. Um, I thought yeah. you were right with that, but that's where I was. I couldn't think of anybody else. Well, there's so. another band too called Mr. Big, and I didn't want to confuse them. Um, oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But Mr. They, they only have like one song. Yeah. yeah. But uh, regardless, Mr. Mister. Uh, yes. So yeah, I heard Broken Wings live. Uh, I heard uh, Kyrie live, which is another one of their big songs. Yeah. Um, so more so, of Ringo's definitely still Yeah, and songs. Ringo's fantastic. Like, Ringo oh, puts yeah. on one of the greatest shows I think I've ever seen because well, it's, it's it's basically the biggest musicians in the world doing cover songs. Oh my god, yeah. And they do Yellow Submarine and they do a oh, bunch of yeah, Beatles yeah. songs, but it's, um, it's great. No, one, I mean, one that I still love, I don't know if a lot of people listen to it, but for me personally, it's like, honest to God, like one of my like most memorable music experiences um, was watching when... Uh, VH1 was the one who always did the unplugs, yeah. right? I'm not... Okay, I just want to make sure I wasn't fucking that up. Yeah, VH1 unplugs. Uh, yeah, VH1 did an unplug for Ringo. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. I have the whole CD. Yeah, you know and what's what I mean? great is the Ringo one uh, premiered uh, either two or three weeks after they did Clapton. Yeah. So it was just like, it was, oh my you know, God. star after Double star. Winner, yeah. Great. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he just went off on so much stuff. I, I learned... I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I knew a lot. I mean, I listened to... I've listened to, like, every Beatles song ever. Um, huge fucking fan, but yeah. I mean they. Um, he yeah. talked about so much stuff that I didn't even know, like background shit about like, oh, Octopus's yeah. Garden and stuff like that. Just, yeah. Oh my god, like stuff and, I didn't uh, even think of. Sergeant Pepper. Sport. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Lonely Hearts Club and stuff like that. And yeah. the whole point of of Yellow Submarine, which I'm not going to talk about on here. Everybody just needs to go and, look it up and and. and Listen to Ringo talk about that song. And oh what the point yeah, is. yeah. Because I'm yes. not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you yeah, that on yeah. here. You can't hear that from me. You yes. hear that from them. Yeah. Um, but regardless, it's too important. Uh, Paul McCartney and, and Ringo Starr stuff, yeah. are back in in the studio together. Awesome. We don't know why. We don't know what they're doing. I'm assuming it's new music. I, I it would have to be. But at the same time, I it would really not, like yeah. it if they would do like Beatles songs. 
Like if they would just, just re-record. re-record Well, them. they own so many back now. Right. Paul McCartney's yeah. been spending his entire lifetime rebuying stuff. Yeah, fun fact. Do you know who owns most of them or owned most of them? Uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah. So yeah. when he died, yeah. they all went to the public. Yeah. Which is why, fun fact, after 2009, you started hearing Yellow Submarine and Target commercials. Yes. Because you could. Yeah. Because uh, Michael Jackson had to deal with Paul McCartney to keep all of the rights to uh, the majority of their songs at his estate. Yes. Because Paul McCartney firmly believed he would pass away before Michael Jackson. Yes. And then that all went to shit. Well, so. it, there was also a lot of problems, too, because definitely Paul McCartney wanted... I mean, you could tell, it, yeah, at least from what you saw, you could clearly tell Paul McCartney wanted the rights to the Beatles songs while he was, you know... Yeah. Well, even Michael Jackson was still kicking. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it was very obvious that he wanted the and rights it, to his songs. You know, and another stuff, another thing, too, is that the Beatles were not from America. Yes. So keeping rights over here where they weren't most of the time yes. helped things out. And, you know, what better person to leave it with than the biggest star in America for 30 plus years. Mm-hmm. So regardless, yeah, small tangent, I'm not going to rant because I could talk about music 10 times. No, but it's important. It's, it's definitely but important. It is, it is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the Beatles. It, it's the close. Know. It's the, I mean, it's the only Beatles, true Beatles reunion we can get. Yeah. At this point, sadly, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, Oh gosh, it'd be amazing. Yeah, just just an EP. Jesus yeah, Christ, just, it was a, like well, nothing crazy. Like you know what I mean? Like I don't need a. I mean, like of course I want a whole album. Right. I'm not trying to be ignorant, but like, oh my God, just a fucking EP of like yeah. four tracks. One, just give me a just, song. Yeah, just give me one. Just song. Just give me a song. Yeah. We're the Beatles I mean, and we're back. Like <laughs> I thought it was great when a couple years ago, uh, Paul McCartney did cut me some slack with. Dave Grohl yes. and two other surviving members of oh Nirvana. It was it was uh, I forget they were calling it Servana. Yes, it's kind of what, like the the hashtag, which wasn't a hashtag yet, but yeah. like the hashtag going it was around the social media. Yeah. yeah, it was Servana because Sir Paul McCartney and Nirvana, and it mm-hmm. was just it was great. It was absolutely fantastic, and I would love to see Paul McCartney kind of bring more of an attitude. I think he and, absolutely and, will. And with Ringo I, and just do oh, yeah. something. It's well, just, I think, well, it's, it's clear. They're both, I mean, good Lord. They're both, like, the top musicians. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just. They're like, some of the greatest musicians of all time. And, and what's funny is another. Most infamous. You know yeah, what I mean? Another one of the greatest musicians in the world just finally ended. Ozzy Osbourne called it quits with Black Sabbath. Yeah. Black Sabbath had the their last show Ever. Ever. And, you know, one of the big metal giants is done, and one of the big, biggest music giants in general are yeah. now going back into the studio. Which it's just a whole crazy. bunch of crazy shits happening. Yeah. You know, Metallica just performed with Lady Gaga, and now Metallica is going on tour with Avenged Sevenfold, Bold. and, like, minds are just being biggest melted. Tour. Yeah, like, almost yeah, one of like the biggest my mind is ever. just melting That's gonna be day crazy. by day. That's going to be crazy. That tour is going to be bananas. Yeah, I really want to go, but uh, tickets are like already sold out everywhere. Like, and they're it's just also impossible. like multiple hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's like two hundred dollars for like a decent ticket. Yeah, well, that that's uh, after like processing fees and stuff like that. So well, it's really not terrible. Well, fucking moral of the story that you spend two hundred plus dollars. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, it's a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong for a spirit for an experience that will literally melt your fucking face. Yes. Like holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of metal. It it is. It a I just want to see. Uh, M. Shadows do, which is the singer of yes. Sevenfold, do something with Metallica on stage. Oh yeah, like, that, I mean that's, that's what everybody's begging for. It's that's like, all. That's I why you see. pay. That's why you pay the ticket. Yes. You pay the ticket to see some type of. I personally, I would love to see like a band off. Yeah. That would you put both bands and you just fucking go like metal and you just have, fucking like Lars going against like drummer and just you know what I mean like just have. Something. I yeah. don't know. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know, but I would just, oh my God, I would kill the season. Like, yeah. something like that. It'd, it'd be, so be cool. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Oh. It'd be like uh, Chad Smith and Will Ferrell's drum off, but 10 times <laughs> better. <laughs> oh, but, God. Yeah, okay. So that was, that was the tiny little music tangent. Again, music if tangent. you guys want us to talk about music, like, I can totally do, like, a half hour, 45 minute music yeah. segment a week. And just like put that up too. Oh my god! Like if yeah. you want, if you want music news, let us know. Yeah, we can. Yeah, because I, I definitely think. Yeah, I definitely think our main thing, of course, is always gaming. But yeah, yeah I mean, a hundred percent. Clearly, me and Jeremy have other things that we enjoy talking about. Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, um, we don't want to throw you guys at all this kind of rando information. I think it's very important to base off what you guys want to hear. I mean, yeah. obviously, fans are most important at the end. I mean, we're doing this obviously for you guys, so. Um, 
yeah, anything you want to hear, we'll be glad to talk about. Like I said, I mean, the only thing I'm not fucking talking about is politics and yeah, all that yeah, shit. No I'm politics, never gonna no. Yeah. I'm never going to be smart enough to throw any type of opinion on yeah. that shit. It's just not my... It's as, just not as, my as, a, as a good friend once told me, your opinion can be wrong if yes. your facts are wrong. That's very true. And most of the time, if it comes to politics, my facts are going to be wrong. Wrong, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's something so, I, I do not have the patience nor the time to fact check. But regardless, anyway, we, we hit games yes we hit anime which yep. was not planned we hit music which was t- tiny bit planned eh, yeah what do you want to talk about next you want to do pops or you want to do movies let's do let's do pops okay so first first gripe i have um my power ranger pops got delayed yes so the 24th not that long though it's no not, it was there was nine days i'm so mad <laughs> i want my holographic clear plastic whatever i want those pops. 90s, i want those power ranger pops Jared. 90s doll shoe inspired yes i want <laughs> those pops i need them in my life those those are my main hype well ones. i mean walking past your pop wall you have every other power ranger pop ever except so. for that goddamn toy tokyo metallic green ranger <laughs> <laughs> sorry anyway you um get him online yeah, for uh, I, I I oh god, look up the price real quick. I'm going to. Yeah, I uh, I can't even imagine. My guess. All right, let's take a real shot in the dark here. What's your guess before you start looking? Seventy five. Damn it! I literally was gonna guess seventy five. <laughs> I'm not even I fucking had seventy five in my head. You son of a bitch. All right, I'll uh, I'll seventy six <laughs> or seventy five ninety nine. Just that dick price. Right. No, I'm gonna go a hundred. I'm gonna even highball it. Okay. Twenty sixteen New York Comic Con exclusive Funko Park. Pop. 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 Uh, yeah, new Pac. new Funko franchise. Pox. <laughs> uh, Pop. Television Power Rangers. Metallic Green Ranger. Toy Tokyo Limited Edition. $72 plus $529 shipping. What the fuck? However, Never. there's somebody else on here selling it for $169.99. So right in the middle. The best offer on Amazon is $69.80. That's bananas. See, I'm never going to spend that much. Yeah, no. No, me neither. Don't get me wrong. From an avid pop collector, it's... That is too much money for me to ever justify. And to to be fair, uh, it, there is also only thirteen people selling it. Of course, because it was so rare. I mean, Toy Tokyo had to refund more than half of their orders, and the worst part was half of those people of that half didn't even get their refunds back. Yeah, that was a fucking travesty. Oh yeah, that was don't terrible. even start on. That. So I'm sorry. So yeah, we're God. This is the tangent of all tangents. <laughs> We might need to subtitle this, like, Tangent Podcast. Uh, it's going online on eBay for 68 Ooh. I'd rather buy it off Amazon. Oh, here's one for 51 Okay, stop. We need to stop. For <laughs> so going off, though, on other pops that did just come out, Daredevil ones finally yes, hit the streets. Yes, and they look amazing. They they look absolutely amazing. Uh, Jessica Jones finally came out. So the whole Netflix Oh, good. I didn't see out. that one. Yeah, Jessica Jones came out today with Daredevil. They look absolutely amazing. Cool. Good, good, good. Uh, Godfather came out. Yes. They look great. Yes. Personal Vito, Vito with the cat. Yes. Oh my god, I love that. That's so great. Um, yeah, yeah. I thought the Godfather ones were so cool. Stranger uh, Things. Stranger Things are finally hitting more stores. More. Yeah, I was about to say um, a few stores had them, but now they're out. Yes, like, I got uh, a chance to see an Eleven Chase. Oh which really? Is cool. Yeah, somebody in line in front of me had it. God damn it! Uh, yeah, that was so. the one. Uh, that chase was the wig, right? The wig. Yes, with yeah. the Echo Waffle. Yeah. yeah. And then there was Upside Down Will, which I did see at GameStop. Um, oh Which yeah. is pretty cool. Uh, it's a Think Geek exclusive. Yes. So, they uh, changed that like last minute. I yes. Saw that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, GameStop is selling it. Mm-hmm. Um, got in there. Got a uh, a Star Lord chase. Ooh. Pretty, pretty pretty exciting. Nice. Um, so I got stuff. that. But yeah, good, but which, good, they good. also had the Guardians of the Galaxy pops. Speaking of which. Yes. Which um, Jeremy which, is fucking in love with. Yes, I already have all but three. Damn. Um, it, it, minus exclusives. Of course. Um, the GameStop that I went to did not have an exclusive rocket. How dare I was kind of upset about. How dare the that. one that I want the most is the 11 inch Super Size Group, which is Target exclusive. I was just going to say, which Target. Which is 30 bucks. Yep. Really not a bad price. It's going to be impossible to find. I'm never going to get it. I was just going to say, it's, it, it hasn't even come out yet, technically, right? Yeah. Technically. It's not out really. Well, it should have come out today or tomorrow. Listen, dude. But it's probably not. I still need an OG Rita Repulsa from Walmart that I'm never going to get. Yeah. And Alpha 5. Yeah. God which, yep. damn it. Yeah. Oh, nobody's ever going to get. I just made myself more angry. <laughs> Shit. God damn Nick's it. Nick's rubbing his forehead right now. Ugh. Trying to figure out what motion to take. Shaking my goddamn head. Um... Yeah, were those those were all the pops that came out, right? I'm trying and to think. Silicon Valley. 
<gasps> yes, yes, I forgot about those. Silicon, silicon, silicon. 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 Silicon Valley. <laughs> silicon. Get it? It's, yeah. in a, it's a valley that's shaped like a cone. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a silly cone. <laughs> 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 Stop. Get out. Get the fuck out of here. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So what was it? Pops and then Overwatch? Right? Oh, no, no, hold oh, on. The, what the, the fuck? Disney box. The fucking Disney we box. We gotta talk about Jesus the Disney box. Jesus Christ, this yeah. Disney box. Yeah, we Just have... announced it today. Yeah. Could it's not be. Disney Treasures. Yes. Uh, we don't really have a theme. Uh, for the first one no, yet. but the first one, at least from what they're showing, they're showing the pirate from Peter Pan. Right. So, so could it be just pirate themed in general? I mean, Maybe that could. Get... I mean, for the record, that could just be the pop. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, I would appear so because that I don't think that's a pop that's been out. Mm-mm. Well, can you? I, okay, but Jeremy, yeah, 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 gonna, thank you. Yeah, I was yeah, about yeah. to say, Jeremy. Uh, what yeah. is his name? Smeagol or uh, what is his name? Smitty. <laughs> Smitty. Uh, oh, yeah, Jeremy's gonna look it up. <laughs> Peter, so we don't see the, the Peter so Pan we stop guessing. Uh, pirate. God, people are screaming um, right it's now. Not, Smitty not or like something. Yeah, I think it is Smitty. I think it is Smitty. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's Smitty. Smitty. Uh, Do you have it confirmed? Hold on. Hang don't on. yeah, hang don't on. say yeah <laughs> and then lose it on us here. Come on, we're all waiting on Smee. Mr. Smee. Mr. Smee. Mr. Smee. Mr. Smee. Yeah, there we go. Whoops. So, so him. Yeah. Okay. Um, so hopefully he is on the picture at least of the first box. But but you would you would think that they would do Beauty and the Beast since it's coming out. And, and I don't on. think so, only because it's already doing a thing with that. And this, uh, from what from what it looks like. Okay, it's hang oh, on, sorry, go. I got it. Oh, uh, so. Ahoy there, mateys. Get ready to embark on our maiden voyage as we prepare to ship out our debut box, Pirate's Cove. The Pirate's Cove box includes a Mr. Smee Pop and so much more Funko exclusive Disney Pirate Booty. So that could be Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, I think so. So. I I, think they're going to be themes. Yeah. Next one could be. Maybe we'll get a pirate shirt. Could be. I'd be okay with that. Well, I guarantee, like, no offense, I guarantee this is the only pop. Yeah. And then the other stuff is going to be all Funko related, so they might do, um, well, usually the other ones do like comics. I don't think they're going to do a comic. No. Uh, I don't probably know. a hat. They'll probably do the hat. I wonder. They'll probably do the dorb. They're definitely going to do a dorb. I wonder if the pin is going to be an official Disney trading pin. I don't think so. Personally. That's just me. But why not? I think it's more Funko. I think Funko is going to have the. Yeah, but if Funko can put I think an it'll official be a, Disney trading pin inside Kingdom Hearts. I think it'll be a Disney thing, but yeah. I don't think it'll be the Mouse One of like their official ones. Yeah, I don't think it'll be Mouse Ears. Well, I think, like I said, I think it's official, just not like, yeah, not right. like, I think it'll say Disney brand on the back of the Funko thing. Yeah. That's, that's my opinion. Um, yeah, I think they'll do a dorb, a hat, a pop, and a shirt, probably. Um, they might do rock candies, not for this one. Because Rock Candies, personally, I'm just saying this right now, by the way, I'm not a fan of the Rock Candies. No, me neither. I don't like that they keep putting them in my fucking boxes. Like, I don't want them. I don't if need if they do do one, they'll probably do Emma Swan if they do a Rock Candy for this yes. one. Yes. Um, yeah, if they do. Uh, so here's a fun fact. You can't order it yet. No, I didn't think so. I thought it was just an announcement for right now. Oh, I thought it was going to be announced and go order. But, uh, no, no. It, yeah, it doesn't look like it. So we don't know a price point. Yeah. Um, we don't know guesses? price point. We don't know. Uh, guesses on price? Twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, that's yeah. Thirty bucks is one, yeah. I guess as well. Because that's what the other ones are, right? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so thirty dollars. Um, and looks just for like, everybody that you know may not know, we have three other ones: are Marvel, Marvel, DC, and Star Wars. Yes. Uh, so we technically, if you throw everything into a, a fucking order, there we you have go. <laughs> we have three Disney boxes because yeah. we have Disney, Star Wars, and Marvel. So I'm not really surprised there's a, a DC box, but at the same time, the other three are all Disney properties. Yeah. Um, now, that begs to say, do you think we'll ever get like a video game box? Absolutely. I mean, this clearly goes to show that they're just expanding. Yeah. They're just going to – I mean, and this is what Pop has been doing for a while. Yeah. And, and I'm actually like – it's really funny because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Pops. Um, but this is where I'm going to go against the grain here, if you will. Um, I am getting a little frustrated. This pop, this box announcement. I know for you, because Jeremy's a fucking huge Pirates of the Caribbean fan. Yep. So like for him, this is exactly just a few uh, this is, Disney fans. This is exactly what he needed to hear. Yeah. Um, for me personally, <laughs> I'm very pissed just because like this is that limit. We're don't get me wrong, Funko is trying to hit every market now. They they are making it impossible for you to not relate to something that they have put out. 
Which is great, and that's yeah. what a company should do. I'm not trying to get. Twisted. I mean, they they just announced that they're doing Metallica and Justin Bieber pops. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so they're gonna constantly keep doing shit. Um, but for me, I'm just definitely at that point where if it's not like a Chase Limited or because uh, me, let's put, like I was just going off on anime. Like another new one that just came out was the finally Hot Topic put out their Six Paths Naruto. Naruto. Yep. And Sage Mode came out too for GameStop for yep. uh, Anime Day. So I I got both of those. So I was super hype about that. Uh, but for me personally, I've tapered off. I mean, like I have, like I said, like 200, almost 250 plus pops. And like I said, if for me now, if it's not a chase or it's not one, I need to fucking buckle down and get. You know what I mean? Like that's where I'm holding off. At the same time, coming from a guy who's buying the entire fucking Power Ranger set. But yeah. that's because I think they are fucking fire. But, uh, you know, that's just me. Um, so, I mean, yeah, so it's I, weird. I count it. I have 172 now after the eight that I bought today. There you go. So. Fucking it. Lots. It's a lot. It's a lot it's, of money. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. Yeah. My collection's worth thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm saying. So I haven't even I haven't to even, an app. Yeah, I haven't even budgeted mine out, but I'd probably throw up if I did. Um Well it's a lot of money. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's in a, yeah. And it's <laughs> it e- and it's probably it's probably like twice the amount of money I paid for half. Like, you know what I mean? Um no, but anyway. I mean, I would love for them to do a video game one. I mean, personally, uh, another one I another series I'm glad they announced, but uh like the Kingdom Hearts. Love that they announced it. Super pissed I haven't seen a character I want. Oh, yeah. Mickey, Donald, Goofy, cool. Pete, yeah. uh, Chip and Dale, what the fuck? Like, yeah. I get it. You're coming out with the Disney characters. Where the fuck is Kyrie, Sora, Riku, Axel, Ansem, yeah. fucking Xehanort? Like, where Aqua, the... Aqua, Ventus. Ventus, oh my god. Roxas. Chase, Chase variants of armor. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. I just didn't even think about that until right now. Um, Fuck actually, it, hey. Chase variants of Sora. Hold on. All right, hold on. Stop. I'm already stopping you. Okay. Chase right. variants of everybody. You have fucking Riku in his fucking, when he becomes the Heartless yep. and gets fucking cape thing. You have Sora doing the either uh, the Dream Drop Distance Marker Mastery ones or the Mastery Forms nope. in fucking two. You know what they'll do for Sora? They'll do the all black shadow The Sora. Nightmare one? Yep. Yeah. God damn it. I was thinking that one too. Uh, can we get a six inch... Uh, like shadow fight guy, what the hell is he called in the beginning? The the big like the, he, he oh he, oh he, yeah yeah the um I don't what dark he's side no is that what they're what he's called? called? Um. Damn it, we're doing so many <laughs> fact checks. We're off on thirty six tangents and we have to fact check. It's because we weren't planned for fucking any of this. everything. I seriously think it's Dark Side. I know that might sound so silly. <laughs> I don't think it's Dark Side. I'm telling it you, might bro. Be, it might be Dark Side. It I might. really think it's Dark Side. Here, uh, hold on. Heart, this is where oh oh, oh my computer just go isn't. first. Uh oh. Oh. Nope, nope. It was just, it was just Safari. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Safari. Until they sponsor uh, us, then thank heartless. you. Safari. <laughs> just go first boss. Name a first boss in first Kingdom Hearts. Right, you're right. It's a proper way to Google this thing. Yeah, we need to, we need to know. It's just gonna eat at us. This is not a thing I, I will let people say in the comments. I guarantee fucking to you, it's Dark Side. I'm getting more confident about. It. But I feel like it's spelled Dark Side like E I D. Nope, it it is dark side, but it's S I D E. S I. Oh, it is. Just oh, regular okay. side. But it is dark side. Yes. Okay, so fucking yeah. So dark right, side, right. six yeah. inch pop. That'd be fucking cool. Going yeah. off on that whole fucking thing. <laughs> so yeah, six inch dark side pop would be great. Um, yeah, I mean they they could do a bunch of stuff. Oh, but yeah, dude, I would fucking murder people in the. Hold on, I would murder people in the goddamn streets if they did birth by sleep set of three and then fucking chase variants of them all in armor. I would straight up. Like, they could do oh, fucking a. That'd they be could amazing. do a guard armor, mm-hmm. and have the first six inch chase as opposite armor when he changes when you go back to him. <gasps> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be <laughs> that would be insane. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we've seen a six inch chase, have we? Or, uh, no, not for not for Kingdom Hearts. But I mean, for anything like a six inch chase. Pack. Oh no, 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 no! You're right. Uh, maybe. Oh. Think, well, no. So there's I think six. Sma- Smaug had a chase. Did he have a? Ch- oh yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Smaug had well, a chase. Well, see, they had exclusives. Cause like Karama is the one I know of from Naruto, and that had a GameStop exclusive. Uh, Karama mode, Karama. Yeah. No, sense. this uh, Smaug, Smaug did have a chase. chase. Okay. Yeah. So the second. I don't know what the hell is different though. The gold or his eyes? Didn't he weren't his eyes all? There was one where his eyes were like... Oh, his eyes are yellow. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. His eyes were different, and then the other one's like he's all gold. Yeah. Turns out... uh, 
one of the Dark Crystal characters had a chase. Yeah. So did Astro Boy. Yep. And so did uh, Robin. Like, DC Heroes 02 Robin had a chase. Really? What yeah. was it? Do you know? It, uh, oh, he's metallic. Holy shit. He's metallic. That might be like the first chase ever. Yeah. Holy yeah, it looks that way. Fuck. Arrested Development had a chase. Yeah, oh my god, the Buster Blue one. Yeah. That's the fucking one uh, me and a couple of buddies of mine were fucking killing people for. I, uh, yeah, I'm never going to get it. And Ryu from Street Fighter had a chase. Really? Yeah, the Riddler had a chase. Okay, we're going to... <laughs> stop, stop. We'll do a fucking chase rando thing later. Your fact check... Jeremy, you're too deep. In- oh shit! For the for the viewers at home, <laughs> Jeremy almost like flipped the table in excitement. His mind just got fucking zero blown. Zero from the Nightmare Before Christmas has a glow in the dark chase. Fuck! Was it an exclusive? No. Damn. I'm really mad. I didn't know that. Holy shit! Well, now you gotta go on the hunt. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta Amazon price search that fuck. Probably like two hundred dollars. Bet you right now, two hundred bucks. Zero chase, glow in the dark. The only fucking uh, alternate one I wanted, it was an exclusive, not Chase, but the White Raven from Teen Titans. That's the one that's still like $500. How much is it? $128.88. There it is. That's what I'm telling you. I mean, not 200 but fucking... Hey, your uh, your uh, Hanna-Barbera ones, uh, Wally Gator and Snagglepuss, are 50 bucks. Really? Yeah. That's not bad. Well, yeah, that makes sense. That's how just, much uh, I just flew up one. Yes. Well, yeah. I also got the... I love the... Personally, by the way, another set that's been like coming out that I love is the Hanna-Barbera, but they're doing either like the Chase neon ones, yeah. or they're also doing just neon-colored ones. Uh, like on the Funko shop, they had yeah. the Gila Gorilla, which I... Oh, they also so did... Uh, um, Flintstones. They, yeah, pe- uh, like Pebble, Pebble. Pebbles and Bam Bam. Bam. And, and then, then they did uh, Dino. Yes. In the car. In the car. Yeah, which is pretty great. Which I like, here's the thing. I actually do want to get them, but it sounds really bad. I'm secretly waiting for them to do a neon one. Yeah. And then I'm going to get it. Yeah, now, I might be wrong because I might, they might never do it. I might oh, they'll do probably it. do a neon Dino. I'm really hoping. Yeah. Um, yeah, Pebbles and Bam Bam, I don't think they will. No, um, no. I mean, unless it gets really yeah, I don't more think popular. So um, but yeah, yeah, those are new ones that they added, so I thought that was cool. Well, but, we mentioned Power Rangers. Yes. So let's talk about another Power Ranger thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, the you brought run this up to time me for the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, run time for the movie has been announced. It's 124 minutes for those of you that can't do math that quickly. It's two hours and four minutes. Yep. So just uh, over two hours. It's kind of what I expected. Yeah. I think it's I think it's on point. Yeah. I think that will explain a movie. And also too, I mean, it's Power Rangers. You can't have a three-hour Power Ranger movie. Right. Then it's like, holy fuck, how much story are you putting well, in? Well, I, I know like a couple people were commenting on the initial post. I saw it from comicbook.com on Facebook. Okay. A couple people were commenting on it saying that it was longer than they expected. Well, I mean, that Which, makes sense. I yeah. mean, usually when you think of a Power Rangers movie, you, I typically, honestly, I would think an hour and a half. Right. When I heard two I mean, hours, is, I was like, huh. This is a whole, like... I know. Well, they got to they gotta do more setup. They yeah. got to fucking jump in the lake that's not a lake and then yeah, pick and then up the stones. Yeah, grab the stones and then exactly. the zords yeah. and so, the stuff. <laughs> Now you're going too old. <laughs> the swords and the things and the gold. The swords and, and gold, stuff. And Goldar and... <laughs> Goldar that looks like he should be a chase pop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> New future Goldar chase pop. Coming to no store, you, probably. You, you listen, Funko? Yeah. <laughs> you giving you ideas. Oh, my God. We're giving them too many ideas. That's our problem. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, we're giving them too, us. too many ideas that we've just been sitting on our ass going, I want, I want these pups. And then none of them come <laughs> out. None of them come out. Um, I know. I think it'll be good. And yeah. I, I'm so hyped for it. I'm still so... I mean, we've talked about it before. I'm so fucking hyped for the movie. I think yeah. it's going to be fucking amazing. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be so uh, good. What are we, like, four weeks out from release day? Yes. Yeah. Comes out next yeah. month. Yeah, so pretty, mm-hmm. pretty, pretty soon. Yes. Uh, we also mentioned Disney, obviously with the box. Yep. There's a bunch of Disney shit going on. Uh, Go for first it. off, we have Beauty and the Beast coming out here really, really soon. Yeah. Uh, so Are you excited of... for that? No. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not really. Uh, the I mean, I've seen all the other live action Disney movies. Yeah. I I am enjoying the fact that they are taking all these old animated classics. Yes. Uh, Peach Dragon was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, which I, I feel like nobody saw. Yeah, hmm. it, it was. It went under everybody's radar because Pete's Dragon wasn't a big animated one, but yeah. it was big enough that they did a live action remake that was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So I'm gonna see it, but I've never been the biggest Beauty and the Beast fan. Also, um, I don't need to see Stockholm Syndrome the movie. <laughs> Fair this enough. Must be fucking real, bro. Um, but, I'm glad like Emma Watson's gonna kill it. Oh yeah, absolutely. She's gonna be great. I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's. I mean, I, so the older I get, and this is. 
unpopular, but the older I get, the more I just don't give a fuck about Disney. And it's ironic enough coming for a dude who fucking loves Kingdom Hearts. Every yeah. time I just see Disney, half the time I'm like, <gasps> see, I'm it's excited. Just me. I'm excited for some things. Yeah, like if uh, you know, if they do a, a live action Peter Pan, I don't care. They do. Well, it's because we've seen thirteen. Right. Of them. If they do live action Hunchback of Notre Dame, don't care. However, what they oh Notre Dame could get fucking bananas. Oh, it could be cool, but I'm not gonna. It's not something I'm I'm there for. Like I didn't care when they did Cinderella. I didn't really care when they did. Um, yeah, speaking of which, Alice oh my god, I didn't dude, really care. what a fucking sleeper that was. Yeah. I didn't even know Cinderella came out. Really? Like I heard, and dude, I'm dead serious. I saw the initial trailer, and then there was that whole teaser with the glass slipper. Yeah, I was like, cool. And then by the time the pops came out, I was like. Oh fuck! This movie came out, and yeah. like, I didn't hear anybody even talk about it. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I feel like it just kind of dropped. Well, the the first one was Alice in Wonderland, then Maleficent, Cinderella, uh, yeah, the Jungle Book, Alice yep. Through the Looking Glass, Bingo, uh, Peach Dragon, yep, and then we've got Dumbo in development from Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's gonna be crazy. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. That like I feel like it's gonna be the whole Dumbo dream sequence is the yeah. whole fucking movie. Yeah, oh, it's Tim gonna be Burton. great. I cannot wait. That's definitely gonna be. It's gonna be weird. Yeah, it's gonna be weird. Um, we've also got uh, Beauty and the Beast, mm-hmm. and then we've got one of my favorites. So uh, John Favreau, who uh, if people don't know, uh, did Iron Man one and two, uh, directed them. Isn't that Favreau? Favreau, yeah. Favreau, Favreau. People say it differently. Bonnaroo. I've, <laughs> I've never heard Favre. him say his last name. So I've always gone it, off I, of... I think it is Favreau. I've always heard Favreau, but I'll say Favreau. Fa- yeah. Favreau sounds so silly. If <laughs> that heard, is actually the way you pronounce it, I'm sorry. That just sounds silly. I've, I've heard that more than I've heard Favreau, but we'll say Favreau for this. Yeah. So... Uh, he was the director from Iron Man 1 and 2. Yeah. He also plays Happy Hogan. So um, I, I feel like it's like Brett Favre. Like Brett Favre. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. it's that. Maybe. 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 Um, but he directed The Jungle Book. Okay. He is also directing a live-action Lion King movie. See, that'll be sick. So That'll be fucking crazy. One little tangent I want to kind of bring up with that is The Lion King is one of very few original... Disney movies. Oh, yeah, OG. Because Disney, I mean, oh, yeah. Alice in Wonderland is not an original story. Nope. Sleeping Beauty, not original. Yeah. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, not original. They're, none of them are original. Yeah. Uh, there's some that are, but this. Is Beauty and the Beast not? No, it's not. Uh, wow. Beauty and the Beast was a play from years and years and years ago that oh, eventually okay. got adapted. Um, I mean, well, yeah, Pocahontas even, isn't. No, yeah, like Alice in Wonderland, isn't that from, uh, not Grim Fairy Tales, but something like it? Yeah, yeah, mistaken. but older, but it was always called yeah. Alice Through the Looking Glass. Yes! So, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they just That's... did Alice in Wonderland, and then they did The Looking Glass. Glass. Yeah. Um, Mulan's not even original. Yeah. <laughs> but, Damn, Jesus. yeah, uh, The Little Mermaid's not original. Like, they don't, they, it was all old fairy tales that they brought to Disney Classics, what which about, is cool. Sorry, now I'm just asking, Snow White and the Seven Doors? Not original. Damn! Yeah. What the fuck? Pete's Dragon's not original. Sword in the Stone's not original. <gasps> yeah, there, there's a bunch <gasps> of them that aren't, <laughs> that aren't original. Jeremy, stop. <laughs> but anyway. Jeremy, you're scaring the me. Li- <laughs> the Lion King 100% is original. Okay. Um. So. Ironically enough, it's a ripoff of a Shakespearean play. Yes. But. But it's not a complete. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a complete, like, Jesus retelling Christ, of the Disney same thing. what has Disney done? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> but anyway, oh, dear. Um, so John Favreau. <gasps> Lady and the Tramp? Original. Okay. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, that's original. I needed to guess uh, one. <laughs> Oliver's Company is original. The Rescuers are original. Stuff Good. Like that. Um, Good. But John Favreau is, he directed The Jungle Book. Yes. Which yeah, yeah, was yeah. absolutely fantastic. Oh, it was yeah, yeah. great. I loved every minute of it. They had the perfect cast, the perfect music with She was that. good. They did enough yeah, live action. It was, stuff it was like that. great. Yeah. This is going to be on par with it. I can already tell. Oh, it's Lion King. Yeah. It's, it's going to be better. It, yeah. It, we've it got the Lion King. Uh, we we have James Earl Jones coming back as Mufasa. Which is sick. And we have Donald Glover, who, as most people know, as Childish Gambino. Oh, yeah, of course. Is Simba. Simba. Yeah. Uh, so it, Dude, it's, he is like... He like, is doing all the First dirty... of all, he's young Lando. Well, yeah, he's I was, in... was going to say, he's doing all the deals with Disney. Yeah, he's in Spider-Man. Yep. Uh, and he's he's going to be Simba. Uh, Did they, um, I don't know if you knew that. Did hashtag they... Simbino. <laughs> Stop. Not funny. <laughs> Props uh, to not me for that. Props yeah, I was to just... Zach for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, with Spider-Man, did they say what his role is yet? Uh, loosely. Uh, it... It's the only thing I didn't know. 
in the beginning, it was, they kind of made him seem like he was going to be a school employee. Got it. Which he still might be. You mean but, a student? No, a school employee. Like Oh, like a teacher? More like a janitorial kind of person. Got it. I was like, Not a faculty member. It's like, motherfucker, you kept saying school employee. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> There's <laughs> not, a teacher not... <laughs> or a janitor? What is he, a lunch lady? <laughs> what, what are our well, options? It, 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 was, it, was originally, it was originally him being made out to either be like a janitor or like a maintenance person. Cool. Or like... Fucking racist, but I don't know. <laughs> or like somebody... Fuck, God was... forbid, God forbid he taught, you know what I mean? Well, educated mind, he could easily do The that. other thing now be a teacher. Be great. is it Sorry. seems like he's going to be Miles Morales' uncle. That's fucking weird. Who, because Miles Morales is going to apparently make a cameo appearance in this movie. Which I don't even know how I feel about because it would make sense. It, it, it can, <clears throat> though. It, it can, but it can't. Because here's the thing. He has to be so much younger. Well, if, if, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's hold on, because we're gonna go off on a big Spider-Man tangent. Yeah, this is what we want to do anyway. Yes. But um, here's the thing: if we're going off comic continuity, which Jeremy's about to like throw some fucking <laughs> words at me, which you can't see. Which let me throw out a disclaimer: this new Spider-Man movie, Homecoming, right? Yes, that was the title. Thank you. So Homecoming is not following any comic continuity. No, because <laughs> remember. This I knew is... I couldn't keep you waiting that long. This is like, Remember, this is Earth 616. Okay. So. Fucking everything's on its head and they're allowed to say whatever they want. No. Oh. This is the way that, and this, a lot of people may not know this. Okay. The Marvel Cinem- Cinematic Universe is not an adaptation of the comics. No, of course not. Right. Yes. But a lot of people think that it is prone to be an adaptation. Yeah. It's not. No. The Marvel Cinematic all. Universe is a parallel universe to said comics. Okay. So the things that happen in the comics will happen entirely differently in the movies because it's not – the movies aren't trying to be the comics. No, The of movies are not. just – right. No. So that's why – But some – but let me just say this though too – most plots and developments have um, some right. type of comic origin. Right, because it's parallel. Yes. Right. So, that being said, Miles Morales, if he's going to be in the movie, is probably going to be a senior. And this will probably be it. That bothers me. Well, this will probably be the only time we see him. He'll probably That's graduate dumb. and be on his way. That's the point. Why do that? Because they're setting him up for later. That's dumb. Don't do that. They will, though. Oh, that makes me mad. But see, Miles Morales is so popular because of all the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. Well, here's the thing. They're gonna put him on. They're gonna put him in the movie. Well, here, like, here's the thing. I want him in the movie. I don't. Yes. Want, yeah, I don't want this to get twisted. I want Miles Morales in it, and I would love future endeavors of Spider-Man. Right. Here's two big problems I have with this. One, if you're really gonna put him in, you've got to kill Peter Parker. Here, okay. Later. Look, Later. Yes, but still, you like. No, I'm not saying that like. They could. They could yeah. just put them both in. But in my opinion, you got to kill one. Well, you can't have both Spider-Mans compete. It's too weird. Right, but at the same time, Miles Morales doesn't have to be Spider-Man. He can just be Miles for a really long time. And they yes. can just alter his origin later when Tom Holland no longer wants to be Peter Parker. I agree. I totally agree with Which that. Which is but, probably what they're going to do. But here's the thing. Then, if we are... This is good. We're having a good debate. Um, here's the thing, though, that I have a potential issue with them. So you have Peter Parker, yep, who's in high school. Yes. And let's say – by the way, this is still three. We don't even have concrete shit. But let's just say Miles is a senior. Yep. I already don't like this premise because a younger kid is dying for an older kid to then, in theory, take his place. I already don't like it. This is just me. I'm, this is just my okay. opinion. You know what I mean? Like, well, I'm but just... keep in mind, in, in, they, that might change. They might, yes. they might be in the same grade. Yes. But Miles is always older. What do you mean? In in the Ultimate Spider-Man universe, technically Are you Miles, sure? yes, in the comics, technically when he is first introduced, he is older. Then they did the Secret Wars, and the universe got demolished, and everything came out, and everything was born again. Miles was younger, but in the beginning, when Miles Morales was first introduced into the universe, they did him. They did him in a side story because it wasn't in a main comic yeah. issue, and he was younger, or he was older. Older? Are you he was sure? Older. Yes, 100%. I'm dead serious. I really don't want to debate this with you, but like... Because when they, when they started true. it, when, when, when Miles was originally put into this, yeah. this was years ago, before yeah, Ultimate yeah. Spider-Man was even a thing, he was a cameo, and he was an older college student than Peter Parker. Then, later on, when they realized, hey, let's do, like, a different Spider-Man. They were like, you know, we introduced this character a long time ago. His name was Miles. Let's give him a last name. 
and make him younger. Yeah. So he was always there, but they never gave him any backstory. They never gave him a thing. No, yeah. But he was an older, put right, he was an older college student. Then I listened to an interview forever ago with um, uh, Quesada, Joe Quesada. Yeah. And he talked about how when they decided to do the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon show yeah. and decided to do the Ultimate Spider-Man comics and use Miles, they used the tiny backstory premise that they built for the small interaction with Miles years ago mm -hmm. and just used the same character because they liked the backstory that they gave him. They liked the fact that he was racially diverse. Yeah. They liked the fact that he well, was... Well, even the comics wanted to do something different too. They, right. They... Uh, even Marvel felt like at the time they they rehashed the same Peter Parker story thirteen thousand so times. So the Miles, which Morales... first of all, though I could read infinite oh, Peter yeah, Parker absolutely. stories. Like Peter Parker's like one of my fa might be my favorite comic book character of all time. Right. So the Miles Morales that we know and love as Spider Man yes. fans is actually younger. But when yes. he was first introduced in his cameo appearance, yeah. years ago, fucking forever, yeah, he exactly. was older. So, but for the record, though, the majority like. The so, majority of people will recognize him as younger. And but, well, let me say this then. So how about this? Because like I said, so you've presented pure fact, and I totally accept that. But here's the thing then: if they did reintroduce him then as younger, and that's how they kept the continuity, wouldn't you then say, in theory, in theory, he should be younger? Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, well, I'm saying based off majority. Right. I'm not like at the same time. Yes. It I'm could not be mad understand. if he's older. No, I mean like it's just the thing of for me, I just find it now, weird. The other thing though too. Um, Peter Parker could be a junior in this movie and Miles could be a freshman or Miles could be from a competing school. Like yeah. maybe they're at basketball games or something and there's because they've already said that there's a, a a scene taking place in a gymnasium. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're playing basketball and maybe like Peter's chilling up in the bleachers and you know they announce the basketball players from the other team and they say Miles Morales whatever I don't know some people out yeah. of school yeah <laughs> <laughs> a couple of guys yeah, yeah. So Miles Morales up to no good so yeah. let's make a trouble in his neighborhood he's a friendly the, the neighborhood, friendly neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. god but uh future yeah. Will Smith cameo get ready yeah, people. yeah. Get oh, ready. oh 100% yeah. yeah we'll get uh we'll get Jaden Smith in there somehow no no <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Don't do it. That's how you ruin a movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's just yeah. how you ruin it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, it, it was a lot. This this movie, just in general, backing up a little bit, this movie in general entices me so much and scares me. Yes. <gasps> well, let's let's start off with the fact that the director is an indie director. His name is John Watts. Yes. Hasn't really done a whole lot in his life. Well, I was going to say another thing, too, um, kind of going back on the subject that we were actually talking about before we let it into this was Pops. Um, another thing, which, like, Jesus fucking Christ, we completely overlooked. Um, 36 million Pop announcements. Yeah. They did another whole yeah. fucking bulk of Pop announcements. Yeah, no, I'm not going to lie. Most of them, eh. Darkwing but, Duck. Yeah, that was great. Finally. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Spider-Man whole set was really cool. Yeah. Um, um, I think that was mostly. Those are the big ones. Those two. are the big ones. Uh, yeah, let me. I was about to say. I think. And I know you shared another set. While I'm looking for them, though, um, let's continue Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Spider-Man, uh, we've got both Shocker and yes. Vulture. Yeah, we Shocker have... now, which I, I didn't even know about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's uh, like, first, fantastic. First of all, not to be confused. Shocker, I've known about forever in the fucking comics and TV yes. show and shit. But when it comes to in this movie, yeah. Um, how do you feel about that? Because I'm, uh, I'm pretty pissed. I'm tired of two villains. Didn't they fucking learn from Spider-Man 3? Don't put fucking two big villains in. You're only going to fucking muddy up the thing. Yeah. Same thing with Amazing Spider-Man 2. You fucking put Electro and then 10 seconds of Rhino. Yeah. Why? Why muddy the works? Like, just do this well, setup I mean, with Vulture. The Tinkerer is in this, too. Yeah, but this, it's too many fucking people. But, but, so, supposedly, and this isn't, like, confirmed at all because yeah. nobody's, like, seen the movie. Mm -hmm. um, the Tinkerer is the person that builds Vulture's outfit. That's understandable. And he's also the person that builds Shocker's, that builds Shocker's gauntlets. Yes. And it's all Chitauri technology, mm -hmm. which is the Avengers 1 aliens, for yes. those that don't know. Um and it's basically Vulture uses Shocker to bring out 
Spider-Man. So Spider-Man is going to be like against Shocker in the beginning. Yeah. Vulture's going to see it and be like, I'm going to take out the pesky little twerk or yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. he's going to say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like that's... Which it, is Michael Keaton. Yes, Michael Keaton is How the Vulture. How fucking funny is that? That they had fucking Michael Keaton last year in that goddamn movie. Birdman. <laughs> about fucking Birdman. And he yeah. literally ends up being a fucking Birdman. And ironically enough, the whole thing though was jokingly enough playing off of kind of loosely his take as Batman. Yes. And it's just even funnier that he now even more directly fucking plays a Birdman. <laughs> yeah, like, great. how the fuck is that not the funniest goddamn thing? I feel like they need to, I mean, like, of course, even based off the way the fucking Birdman movie ends, which, yes. oh my god, by the way, like, one of the... Oh, yeah, Birdman's fun, like, fantastic. The fucking most amazing movie I saw last year. Um, but holy fuck, I feel like they need to do a sequel. And just have it fucking yes. be like, you know what I mean? He ended up doing another fucking Birdman. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just fucking bananas. Um, now, also, let's keep in mind... That, that would ruin a lot, but anyway, yeah, sorry. Let's keep in mind here with Spider-Man, we don't have uh, Gwen Stacy or Mary Jane. We nope. have Michelle, yep. who is played by Zendaya. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have... I think uh, she'll be cool. Oh, yeah. I think it's I think it's new. It's different. It's definitely different. Um, I'm not against it. We also have, have Betty seen... Brant. We don't know what character that is. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, know how to say this girl's last name. Anne, Anne Angory? Angory Rice? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Uh, and then we have Anne Kenneth. Gory. Like yeah. an Angory bunny. <laughs> well, it's A-N-G-O-U-R-I-E. Anne Angory. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Kenneth Choi as Principal Morita. Um, hmm. We have Flash Thompson uh, and Shocker in the movie. Um, oh, yeah. Flash Thompson has to be in it. Uh, it's a good one. And then the Tinkerer, who is not an old man. Okay. Let's let's. Uh, He's just some fucking young blood piece. Yeah. Of shit. His um, the actor's name is Michael Chermis. Okay. Chernis. Um. He was born in seventy seven, so like, he's gonna be forty. Like yeah. the Tinkerer is supposed to be like ninety. Well, yeah, but they're not gonna. They might. They're giving him a role that he can still keep for a while. And I yeah. think. I think this guy might be responsible for, like, literally, essentially forming the Sinister Six. Yeah. Like, he might do Mysterion's globe orb thing or smoke machine or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's another villain I would love to see, especially nowadays. Mysterio. Oh, yeah. What, yeah, I, yeah. what did I say? Mysterion? Like, yeah. fucking South yeah, Park? South Park. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Mysterio. Mysterio. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fantastic. That would be fucking awesome. Do yeah. you know the fucking illusions and shit you could pull off on movie scale? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, have these epic fucking CG fights and literally be like, nope. Yep. You're in a fucking hallway the whole time, you dumbass. Like, yeah. oh my god. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I just, um, let me, let me start out with this, by the way. Another thing that's really bothered me with, um, the Spider Man movies, and Amazing Spider Man got close, um, and this is super ironic because I've actually been complaining a lot. About a lot of stuff not being or, or uh, yeah not being original and like they need to do something new and this is something new so I'm a total hypocrite here I should not bitch um, I want to see a Spider-Man movie that just pays original homage to the comics properly and does shit in order I just want Peter Parker to fucking meet Gwen Stacy have them have a fucking fling Peter right in the middle of thinking like there is literally nothing better than Gwen Stacy I'm fucking sad Mary Jane gets thrown in they have a fucking three by the way this last multiple movies they have a fucking <laughs> three way fucking tie in yeah you know what I mean Goblin fucks up that whole mess but Peter decided Gwen Stacy when that happens yeah. fucks up the whole like oh do you know how good like that is the best I mean, like I'm sorry that is the best Spider-Man story you're yeah. ever going to get. And ironically enough, it's a love story. Yeah. You have a villain in Iraq for five minutes. And it's such a fucking good... It's such a good fucking chemistry build-up. And it bothers me because, like, that is such a fucking huge part of Spider-Man. I personally, like, no joke, dude, I think that is why so many Spider-Man movies never felt like they hit the mark. Yeah. Because they missed that whole fucking part. Like, I find the whole love story between them... And not just Mary Jane, but Gwen Stacy, too, so fucking important. Yeah. That's what drives half of fucking Peter's decisions. Half of the time, he's trying to fucking meet back up with fucking Mary Jane to go on a date or fucking do something. Which you know what I mean? they kind of did in the, in the first trilogy. Yes. But not really. Not enough. And Jesus Christ, the fucking two of them, the chemistry was just not yeah, there. No. Holy fuck. I need, like, I need um, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone's, like 
thing. Yeah. And I just, I honestly, I needed that to keep going. It wasn't the best, but I needed it. Yeah. I needed to keep going, and it did though completely piss me off, because Amazing Spider-Man Two ended with Green Spoiler Green Goblin. I mean, like I already said it, but Green Goblin ends up killing off fucking Stacy. Yeah, and it pissed me off. And then we never got a Mary Jane. We didn't anyway. even get a Mary Jane, but it would have been worse. Because it would have been, at that point, that fucks up the whole continuity. Well, well remember well, by the also... Way, and let me... Hold on, sorry. Remember also, yeah. if we were going to get a third movie, it was Michael B. Jordan as Mary Jane and Spider-Man was going to be gay. There yes. was that whole thing that was in there, too, yes. that really would have fucked up continuity. Yes, but I don't I don't think they would have done that. No, but um, that was things that were floating around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Michael B. Jordan is the person that brought that rumor up. Up, yeah, So, yeah. But I think, somebody talked to him. No, what I think, though... Um, what would have ruined it right out the gate was if they would have introduced Mary Jane that would have been like, oh, here's this new chick to literally just replace the chick you just yeah. got. And that fucking, for me, that would have not even been cool. At, no, that, that ruins Mary Jane. That yes. ruins and the entire they also point. wouldn't have done it in the correct way. They couldn't way. have. They couldn't because have. they wouldn't have done, like the third movie sh- would then at that point be really, really dark. It would have been a really dark. It would have movie had to have been about and then Mary Jane to, trying and, to like yeah, pick him and it back would have been up. Pointless. It would have been weird, and that's yeah. not because that's what I almost like about, um, especially comics, especially comics. Um, Mary Jane had so much of a strong independent female role that oh, yeah. gets ruined in the movies. Yeah, like there's so many times where Parker's having a dark moment. And Mary Jane's like, I just need you to be stronger right now. You know, and like, now I don't gonna... have time for you to like wallow. And then right. that's where you like. Picks himself up because some of the times, some of the times, even when you're reading the comics, like sometimes he was being whiny just to be whiny, and like yeah. Mary Jane's like, snap the fuck out of it, like and, you got fucking. And, and that's what Gwen Stacy did, and then she became yes. Spider Gwen. Exactly. So I mean, she died and then became Spider Gwen. But well, alternate. Well, first of all, no. Well, alternate universe. Yes. And then yeah, became Spider Gwen. Yeah, died. I uh, I Spider-Gwen. I'm very upset about that. Can we talk about that for a second? Sure. I don't like that whole. I don't. I don't. Um. I want to say this too. I don't like Gwenpool. <laughs> Let's... I think Marvel, first of all, I think Marvel's super fucked up. I think they came up with a really cool fan fiction idea, and I think they went way too far down the rabbit hole. Yep. And then the worst part was they took all their best writers to come up with this weird story and then put all of them on it. So yep. two bad things happened. One, you got this weird tangent of a story that was never going to – like, no offense. Inspired one is still happening, but it's, it, in my opinion, it's never going to go anywhere. No. Because it's not the main continuity. Right. And you can't put it in the main continuity because it doesn't fucking make sense. Right. So, Unless somehow they – to, and the, did another well, Secret Wars thing where they combined yeah, the universe. Well, that's what I was just going to say. Brown and the only in. way it happened before was like the Spider Island thing where you got all the dimensions mixed up for five seconds. And then right. you had, you know, that. Which is cool for five seconds. You can't have it through the whole fucking thing. It doesn't right. fucking make sense. Um, you know, so you have that and all this other shit going on. I just, uh, I, you know, and then because they moved the other writers to Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man suffered. Like the the, yeah. the comics of actual OG Spider-Man suffered. Now, of course, there's three – right now, there's three different comics of Spider-Man. Yeah. There's the – one of them, which is actually, funny enough, is personally one that I laugh at the most. Um, I'm totally blanking on the title right now. Um, it's the one where uh, it's, it's uh, Parker and Mary Jane, they're married, and both of them are spider people. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they also have a kid. Who's yeah. also in Spider-Man attire, and they're all like doing like a fucking family crime fighting thing. Which actually, like when I first started reading, I was like, "Wow, it's corny and really dumb." But actually, the humor is really on point. Yeah, it's actually really fucking funny because it's super meta. Like it, it totally knows what it's doing and just fucking cracks itself. Yeah. Like, all the time, oh, yeah. which I think is so great. Um, yeah, but anyway, so then they did that, and then they were like, "Oh my god, uh, Gwen Stacy's being so fucking cool. Let's just make her Gwenpool." And yeah. it's like, no. You're like I just feel like they keep missing the mark, and this is so ignorant because I'm a fucking guy talking about women and how they yeah. should be portrayed in comics. So first of all, I'm already wrong. Let me just start off with I'm fucking wrong, but I'm just sorry. Like, just and don't have her be a clone of Mary Jane. Right. Just be a strong fucking independent female doing your shit. You don't have to be Gwenpool. Be fucking Spider Gwen. Do your fucking thing though, and just show how it's independent. Don't be oh Peter died. So now I have to fucking take the torch and then do this. Like, right. no, fucking just do it. Go because... be Spider Gwen somewhere else. <laughs> well, no, not that. No, don't. No, keep... no, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's not what I meant. <laughs> You're kicking her off Spider <laughs> Island, <laughs> bitch. Go be Spider Gwen. No, my face. I face. just mean like, don't because Parker dies. Don't then be Spider Man in New York. Go be Spider Man in Los well, Angeles. Well, also be your own. And my whole thing was just like be her own thing, like be a strong, independent female and just do your right. own thing. But but don't do it because Parker died. 
Like, yeah. it should have been a thing that she was, like, in Miami or Los Angeles or Boston yeah. being Spider-Gwen, doing Spider-Man things while Spider-Man's got New York. Or, yeah. Like, it well, was I done loved, the way they did it. What I would have loved was if um, if Parker didn't die. Well, okay, so by the way, let me, let me, re, let me rewind here. So the origin was – it's a different universe, and yep. they flipped it. Yep. So if Parker never got bit and if Gwen Stacy got bit, because Gwen Stacy was there right. at the thing as well. So Gwen Stacy got bit. Right. Then they do the whole original setup, but P- Parker's still, like, nerdy and kind of gets into his own a little bit, but not even close to as if he was Spider-Man. Right. And then Green Goblin does the same thing and kills him. Right. And then Gwen Stacy, at that point, too, was like, I choose Peter. It was, it was, and then this time it was Peter and Flash Thompson. Yeah. So it was another thing. It was, it was alternate, but it was so similar that it felt the same. And that's what pissed me off, because I wanted her to first... The first thing I wanted was for her to be like, I don't need no man. Like, let me fucking do my thing and fucking yeah. figure this shit out. But then, no. Then she fell into the trope, which is fine. Because uh, Peter did it, too. So, gender equality. That's yep. cool. Um, then she fucking did that, and then Parker died, and then she was like, yeah, I, I need to figure out my own thing. But my thing, which I would have liked better, was if they flipped the whole origin story, and they both got bit. Yeah. And they both became spider people. And they're both doing their thing. But they both have different moralities. Right. So maybe Gwen is more pure-hearted and Peter's the one who goes back and forth because he got hit with a symbiote. Right. Or the opposite. Gwen is more, I'm only going to help people that I feel like deserve help. Some people yeah. shouldn't be helped and be really independent with that and do her own thing. And then you can get a fucking, because we were random about this last time, you can get a black cat dynamic yes. with Gwen motherfucking Stacy, yes. And it fucking makes sense. Which maybe, like, in, in that aspect too, like, maybe Gwen Stacy would take, like, an arrow-type turn where she would go after people that did bad things. Yes. Not just go after people that were like, help me, my purse is Exactly, stolen. yeah, exactly. She would have be, and then maybe and go up with them. black cat. And then and go, go after them. Things. And yeah. do a fucking rogue thing. Yeah, and, and get, like, a, a Robin Hood type dynamic with Black Cat where they go and yeah. like rob the, the big people and then yes. you know get rid of the Do bad a Robin people Hood on the type list. Yeah. yeah. Dude, great. listen, I'm telling you, like Marvel, that's... are you listening? Yeah, yet? really. And <laughs> then also and then also have some cool battle. And then yeah. Parker hits the limit where he has to fight her. And they have this epic fucking spider battle face off, which they really have not done. The last time, in my opinion, that they did it well, which so many fucking comic buffs are going to fucking jump down my throat for this one, but the fucking Spider-Man Clone Wars, <gasps> which fucking so many people hate. I personally did I not have it. that. Yeah, same. I really didn't have that big of a qualm. Yeah, like so it. many fucking people were like, because look at me wrong. It was continuity weird. So is every fucking comic you've ever yeah. read, people. Fucking newsflash. Um, well, I mean, how many times has Superman started over? Like, well, how many how many times in any comic you read ever you would go, well, Superman actually gets hit with a fucking thing and does like it, it, there's so much if you read because the problem is there's 36 fucking million universes so yes yeah. in that and one, there's 36 million variants of every superhero, superhero exactly. Like so, there's the the uh, for just for prime example there's the Captain America saga where he didn't die. He never got frozen. Yeah, exactly. And it all takes place in World War II. Two, yep. Which I'm not talking about the ones that were written in World, World War, War II. II. I'm no. talking about the ones in 2002 Newer. and yes. three that were set in World War II because he was never frozen. Yes, so which just is interesting. Before people start um, arguing. No, but yeah, <laughs> my my whole thing was it of, uh, I love the original concept of Spider-Gun. I thought her outfit kicked ass. I thought it was so fucking smart to all yeah. white and like that pink. I thought it was so cool. Um, but yeah, I just I wanted different, and that when it was and different, it wasn't different it, enough. It, 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 exactly, you just changed who Spider Man was. It was, it was, and you kept the same fucking thing. It was it like watching uh, a New Hope, and then watching The Force Awakens right after each other. <sighs> I we that's a whole different debate that I gotta get into. Because here's the thing: I don't deny its similarities. Yes, but I think Force Awakens was different enough. It, and I personally it, it, it was, enough. yeah. But at the same at the same Point. time. It's it a lot. it's the same it thing. Is, is the same it's plot. it's the same. The Death Star kind now. Is, of yeah, premise. the Death Star isn't a moon now. It's a planet. Right. And fucking everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. So uh, taking. I can't. Off, I can't disagree with it. And, and, and yeah. And I'm not gonna say it's the same movie. Like, don't see it. No. But it's no. The, of course not. Jesus Christ! This fucking new franchise is gonna kick. Yeah. Fucking it's, it's fucking ass. fantastic. It's be amazing. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that they took, they took the, the variants. Yeah. And and the things that make the movies different kind of put them made similarities and 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 made almost the same yes. kind of movie which is I what agree. they're doing with the comics that's how spider gwen is a thing because they took like spider-man and made 
the same yeah. origin story. Yeah, man, I don't know. I think, I don't know. Oh, God. We've been going for a while. We have. Jesus However, uh, this episode kind of was like a trial episode. Almost, Clearly. Because we, we've we talked about comics, which we've wanted to do. Yep. We've talked a little yeah, bit we, about we, music. We have branched across. Well, also, so... Uh, yet again, breaking fourth wall. Me and Jamie were very nervous when we started this podcast. There was not a lot of news. Yeah. There was not a lot of updates, and we were a little bit nervous. But, yeah. of course, in the... And, and everything that was big, like Bethesda announced they're making seven new games. Yes. Okay, cool. Two of them are new IPs. That's great. We they're going to be bigger than yeah. Skyrim and Fallout. Yeah, but it's like... End news article. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Overwatch. New events, new characters, new event stuff. The next character's not Doomfist. Doom Fist, but Doomfist is coming. Right. But not But that's it. Yet. Yeah. I mean, we could speculate on what we want, but speculating on the next Overwatch character with no ground to go on. Yeah. And also, too, yeah, I, I felt, at least for both of us, I feel like it'd be wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong. We speculate all the time, and we've done it on this podcast multiple times. Um, I just don't want to do a whole hour rant about a what if, and then literally nothing. Yeah, with no it. ground to go it on. With no ground to go on. And nothing comes of it. You know, yeah. end and of then the day. South Park got pushed back. Cool. Yeah. Till never. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. God damn. Lord. Yeah, there's no release dates. Just uh, next yeah. fiscal year for Ubisoft, which their current fiscal year ends March 31st. So Ubisoft is still in 2016. Yep. So their 2017 starts April 1st, and it got pushed back into that. Yeah. So it could be... April, it could be November. Yeah. We have no idea. Yeah, but South Park got pushed back. Yeah, I was about to ask. But it, it, it's stuff like that that was going on all this week that yeah. we didn't really have much to talk about. Talk about. So we decided kind of during this podcast, podcast yeah. to very, <laughs> very during <laughs> yes. uh, to do a trial thing. So yeah. we talked about music. We talked yep. about anime. We yep. talked about comics. There's things that we wanted to touch on for a while. Mm-hmm. So that being said, if you as viewers, listeners, yes. want to – Want us to continue talking about things? Let us know in more if you, detail. If, yeah. Especially uh, if anything resonated with you a lot more in this one as opposed to or what our usual format has been. Usual, please yeah. absolutely give us some on our Facebook page, YouTube comments, anything like that. Please let us know because we have so many ideas floating around. There's so many things that we want to do. We're gonna start live streaming and uh, Twitch streaming, and especially, Twitch streaming, especially but yes. just just. Just Soon. audio for the, now. Yes. Just, I mean, it'll be like visual of the gameplay, but you yes. won't see us Very, right away. Yes. Um, so we're going to start yeah. doing that. Mm-hmm. We want to We want to start doing smaller episode type things. Yes. Like if you guys want to <laughs> do – if you guys want us to talk about you know, comics once a month, we'll do an, a half hour to 45-minute uh, comic section. Yes. That's a separate episode. Yeah, sadly. I, I mean we've already heard a couple of people talk us to taper stuff down. Don't get me wrong. We can – but yeah, shorter than thirty is too tough yeah. for now. Yeah. yeah for now. <laughs> Unless we're doing scripted skits, which I just I don't think either of us are yeah, fans no, of. No, it has to, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just gotta, gotta be, be off the cuff. We gotta wing it. The closest the closest We at we least get, have topics. Exactly. The closest I mean, yeah, yet again, fourth wall here. Closest we ever get to topics is writing topics down. That is it. We never yeah. write about what to say. Yeah, and then we just talk about it. Yeah. So and we're both so keeping up on the news the same, so we can both do that. Exactly. But so if, if you want if you want a half hour, forty five minute episode on comics that maybe you just want to hear let us know Absolutely. we'll do it yeah. if you want the same thing for anime let us know we're gonna start uh a, an, an extra episode kind of thing like the overtime episode at some point uh where we just bring up what we're doing in games yeah talk about the progress that like i mean i played and beat dishonored mm-hmm. for the first time i played dishonored yeah uh, you didn't mention that last yeah, time yeah we were like, talk uh, about that a week and a half that. ago yeah and, uh, you we're know, my reactions are great. I want to tell you guys about it, but it's not something we're going to talk about on the main podcast. So we'll start yeah. different progress. Because it is an older and, game, but at the yeah. same time, yeah, it's, right. it's been on your mind. And and like I said, we want to live stream stuff. Yeah. So, well, it's just like how I was talking about Tales and stuff, too. It's like, yeah. yeah. So, it's good stuff. you know, once we start branching out a little more, once we start getting more of a following and, and get more reactions from what people want, exactly. we'll start doing stuff. So, you know, let us know what you want to hear. Let we're us know very, the different things. We're very receptive right now. Yeah. Any, we will absolutely take any type of criticism or idea. Yeah, it's and let whole, us know what you want us to do. Like, yes. if you want to talk, if you want us to talk about more music, let us know. Mm-hmm. If you want us to talk about, you know, whatever, yeah. tell us and Good. we'll do it. All right. I think, uh, I think we're wrapping up here. Jeremy, I'm yes. reminding you like I did before, please plug your music outlet. Yeah, so uh, uh, you can go on Facebook and follow me as a musician. It's just Jeremy Winterstein Music. 
Uh, I'll put a link in in the uh, video description. Mm -hmm. um, you can follow me there uh, and uh, you know like my page, figure out what I'm doing musically. You can also uh, follow my band, uh, which is better than nothing. Um, it's been a band for like seven years. I used to do lights for them. Uh, bands getting lineup changes, and I'm now the singer. Uh, I do a lot of bass work too, but uh, we have our first new show uh, with the new lineup this Saturday, the 25th, uh, at a place up in Redding, Berks County, called Clingers. Um, so if you want to pop out, you can, yeah. but and then, you definitely like us on Facebook. Oh, so let's say plus two on Facebook, you have all of your tour dates. Yes, yeah, now, we do right? We do all of the dates. We at least have March covered. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. On, a, on a poster. Everything's yeah. uh, posted up there. It's under photos to find it. How, but, long, uh, how long have you been doing this whole music setup? I know, I know obviously you've been doing it on your own technically – longer yeah right, i mean well i've been band. i've been doing music my entire life yeah oh, of um, course yeah but i mean i've been playing guitar for 12 years now uh and i've been doing everything with better than nothing counting the lights i've been doing since mother's day weekend of 2011 damn so every mother's day it's my new anniversary <laughs> um but this will be this is the first time i mean i've gotten up and sang a couple songs before but this is the first time i'm full-time musician yeah. yes. in it um which is so, great. good for yeah. you man Thanks. Man. Good stuff. Well, good. So. That's what I'm saying. I absolutely like. I mean, we've been doing this for a while, and um, me and Jeremy have been friends for fucking ever at this point. So. Yeah. Yeah. I just three, three four years. Yeah. So I'm saying that's kind of bad. Um, but yeah, I, I know. Yeah, Jeremy's been talking about music literally ever since we way before we even thought about doing this type of podcast. So yeah. I, I definitely wanted you to plug that because, like I said, I know you got set up with the band and everything, so I thought that'd be cool. Yeah. You cool. brought it up, so cool. All right. Well, anyway, guys. Um, yeah, let's definitely wrap it up. Like I said. Um, definitely check it out. Like the page, share it. We'll be posting fucking everything about we it. We do have a new logo. Uh, yes. Yes. So we will be unveiling Announcement that. of it. We will be yeah. unveiling it very soon. Very soon. Very soon. Uh, so we, we have a couple of surprises. So, uh, you know, shout out to, uh, Kylie for helping us out yes. with that. Thank you. Oh, so um, much. So she, uh, she's, she's working with us on some other stuff. So once we get, uh, a solid, figuring out of what we're going to do we'll uh we'll unveil the new logo on yes Facebook. we'll be posting updates and everything on it so we're going to become a lot more social media active definitely very soon now 100%. that we have something to grab your attention with yes <laughs> so. all right everybody so uh yet again just to wrap up episode four the date again february 20th jeremy this is a pleasure always yes always <laughs> all right always. everybody good night good luck godspeed Yes. Like, share, subscribe, subscribe yeah. favorite. Yes. Peace out. Yes. Adios.